the best time of the season for hockey because it is SJHL playoff time. Creighton Furniture Bomber Playoff Hockey is on the air. Yeah, we're going to have a little bit of pandemonium here now. Oh my goodness, they're swinging away. It's game seven between Estevan and the Flynn Flom Bombers live from the Whitney Forum. We truly have the best fans in Canada. On 1029 CFAR, CFAR 590 and FlynnFlawnOnline.com. Open it, this door! And here with the call the action. Uh, for Flint Flon, the Bombers got something going here. Three on two, Sylvester up the wing. Sylvester, shoot, scores! Another magical moment! The voice of the playoffs. There's a chance off again! Yes, they score! And the crowd is going absolutely cuckoo! The one and only... Like a hungry man on a cheeseburger, Mr. Rob Hart. You're on. Thank you very much, and welcome to a capacity crowd at the Whitney Forum tonight. And that's right, nothing beats a game seven, and boy, it should be a good one again tonight between these two teams again. A historic club soaked in junior hockey tradition. It's been quite the epic battle. Bombers, Bruins, one more around the merry-go-round for game number seven tonight. Mike slipped back in the booth, Mike, and why not a game seven? I mean, we've had everything else. We've had great goaltending. Both teams have found ways to win in each other's rank. We've had uh, both teams go down with some key injuries. We've had both teams have players suspended. I mean, uh, should there or shouldn't be there air horns? That debate's come up again. But uh, all in all, a little bit of everything in this series. And they'll let her buck one more time tonight. Absolutely. How, like, that's why we're hockey fans, Rob. Is for, We live for Game 7. Although I wish we weren't. Uh, <laughs> I wish it was over already. But, uh, yeah, it's going to be super exciting. Uh tonight the Whitney Forum has that buzz tonight like it did uh, during last year's playoff and uh, these guys have really come to play and they've got those additions uh, that came back that made a huge difference on the ice surprisingly but also for morale so uh, well I know uh, you're gonna hear Reese Richmond's interview coming up in the opening intermission and he talked about he said there's something a little bit confident I mean, those are elite hockey players I mean they're not just two of the best players in the Bombers they're two of the best players in the SJHL and Again, I mean, Cole Dupro, uh, 36 goals. Uh, Trombley, uh, 27 goals. They're lethal on the power play. And, and the thing it does, too, Mike, not only does it give a boost to the Bombers, but it also makes Estevan maybe have to go about doing things a little bit differently when you got those guys out there. Yeah. You might have to change things a little bit, and it keeps them more aware as well. There's no question about it. It's pivotal. They both scored in game number six, and I'm looking forward to having those guys back at the Whitney Forum tonight. But, uh, boy, uh, goaltending's been absolutely sensational. I've... You know, you look at the stats, and neither team has got a player in the top ten in scoring, and I think that's just because of how good the goaltending's yeah. been. I mean, the last time you and I did a game, Cam Hurtlicka only made 66 saves. Geez, uh, hardly broke a sweat in that game. <laughs> and then, of course, you got Harmon laser Hume, who might have played his best game as a bomber when they needed him most back in game number six. So the goalies have been good. Uh, the teams have been good. And I will say this before we do take a break and go for the coaches' show. These Estevan Bruins have played anything like a sixth-place club. Oh, no, you would never know. You would never know, Rob, that they were a sixth-place team. They, I mean, they certainly don't have a sixth-place goalie, and they've got a bunch of uh, great hockey players. So uh, it's been a great series, Rob, and, uh, I, you know, it uh, culminates tonight. So uh, excited about that. It's, 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 uh, it's uh, a thrill to be here. Buzz in the community, buzz on social media, and boy, you can just feel the electricity in the Whitney Forum right now. Fans continue to make their way in. It's the first game seven since 2017. Do you know what team the Bombers beat that year? Oh, I looked this up. Uh, was it Humboldt? Nipawit. Nipawit. Yeah. It's fairly close. My wife looked it up and told me. That. 2017, the first time we haven't had yeah. a game seven. Of course, we had the game seven in this league final uh, this past spring. And that literally seems like yesterday. Yeah. The fans already getting jacked up, as you can tell. As <laughs> he just has a way of firing up the crowd. But something tells me, Mike, 
I don't think the crowd's going to need a lot of assistance to get jacked up. I oh, think that that's going to happen. This uh, this rivalry has gotten intense. Teams don't like each other. The fan base doesn't like each other. We like the other uh, announcer, Nolan Cole. He's a great guy. So we might be the only people up, up here that are friends with somebody from Estevan. So uh, uh, we're excited. Uh, it's going to be great. I like Estevan. It's a beautiful yeah, facility. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, I've been going there for now 25 years. I remember doing games in the old Civic Auditorium. Had a lot of great moments there. I, I got a lot of good friends there. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, they've always treated me and the radio station well. Uh, from Pete Saragella, who's actually in attendance here tonight. It's great to see Pete from Estevan. He made the 10-hour trek. Wow. Great hockey fan. Him and his family have been looking after SKHL clubs for decades. And great to see him, but I like Estevan. It's a great community and a great hockey town. Sure and uh, tell you what, they look like anything like a sixth-place club. And uh, they'll get flip on everything they can handle here tonight. A couple big keys for me, Mike. Uh, can the Bombers score early, get the crowd in it, and... If they get a goal, can, the one thing that's eluded them in the few games they've lost, they haven't been able to follow up with a big goal when they've needed it. Yeah. They got that done in game number six. They got the goal to tie it early, got to put the uh, the Bruins back on their heels. So not only does football need to get off to a good start, but when they have a chance to seize the moment, they really, as we've learned, you can't let these Bruins off the mat. Not not at all. And, boy, oh, boy, that power play's got a spark, uh, you know, and, and hopefully with Tremblay and Dupro back in there, that'll, that'll help. And, uh because uh, they were the best uh, uh, power play in the league. And uh, they've done very well on the penalty kill, I think. And uh, um, so the special teams are going to be a big part. Killed a big five on three in the third yes. grade back in game number yes. six. We'll take a break. Mike Craig and we'll comment on about the biggest game coming up for his team. Of course, it's the biggest game of the year on Sunday. Now it's the biggest game of the year here tonight. We'll get to the respective coaches, Jason Tartanic, Mike Craig, and the SJHL Coaches Show. And we're set to go with another great edition of Creighton Furniture Flint Bomb Bomber Playoff Hockey. Again, the rivalry that goes all the way back to the 60s and 70s of the Western Canadian Hockey League. Looking forward to Game 7 here tonight on 102.9 CFAR and FlintFawnOnline.com. Clear. GM, it's all about quick and easy approval. A fast all right, sir. process for all applications are accepted for... may not feel like it just yet, but spring has sprung at PharmaSave. New clothing items from the Kaplan Lily White Collection allows you to be comfy as you dress to impress. Warm up that green thumb with garden items so you're able to plan early. Plus, new electronic items and the M&M Express food market will excite and delight. With knowledgeable pharmacists, helpful staff, visit when you need to or just to check out all the new items, your life. Your store, your pharmacy. You're on. Good evening. Welcome to our SJHL Coaches Show. Mike Gregan will join us here tonight. Mike, they say that there's nothing better than a Game 7, especially when you get to play here at the Whitney Forum. 100%, Hardy. Really looking forward to this. Uh, you know, ever since we won uh, the last game there, it's been uh, nothing but excitement, you know, not only for our staff, but our players, our organization in this community. So, And I, I must say, like, our, our bomber, bomber alumni, I mean, they've been unbelievable so um you know it's a big night for us and uh um, we're focused we're excited uh but we've got a lot of uh work to do oh there's no question about it and you, and you can't take anybody lightly i mean the estevan bruins hung in there i mean you got the deeper club and i don't think that they played like a sixth place team they've been there with you and they and they, and they forced it to get to this point yeah i, I mean you got to give them a lot of credit i mean their goaltenders played extremely well and they've they hey they've won three games and uh at the end of the day, that's all that matters is uh, the number of wins, and um, it doesn't matter how you get it done or, you know, what the circumstances are, um, you know, and that's that's our approach here tonight. We just got to get the job done, finish the job, and, and uh, you know, move on here. So, um, you know, I think our guys are dialed in. I think the morale is real good. Um, you know, guys are excited. There's a lot of energy in our dressing room, um, and I think that that's going to uh, translate to the ice. Big lift, Mike, obviously getting Dupro and Trombley back. We talked a lot about this in depth heading into game six, uh, what they could do for you offensively, but just the boost of the club. Did you notice a difference in the mood of your team when those guys took the ice? We're going to see the playoffs for the first time. Yeah, I think so. I mean, uh, I think there's been a lot of talk over the last 
you know, week and a half of when when Stoop going to get back in, when's Tremor going to get back in, and, and then to have it done, and it's just like, okay, here we go now. And, uh, um, you know, we needed that energy injected into our line lineup, and uh, obviously it paid off. Both guys scored. Uh, I think I've talked uh, about this 25 times now today about, you know, how injecting two guys that are your leading goal scorers, uh, how it pays off and just how those guys, uh, they know how to finish. So um, that's a huge boost, and hopefully they can do it again for us tonight. You know, we talked so much about Cam Hurd. Look at Mike, but, you know, Harmon Laserhume's numbers are better heading into tonight. Yeah, he's been fantastic. You know, I mean, uh, he probably gets uh, overlooked just because of the 66 save performance, but, man, he's given us every chance to win. And, you know, out of your number one goaltender, that's what you ask is, uh, you know, just give us a chance to win. And the boys have responded. Um, you know, he's been great for us. We need him to do it again here tonight. Back end's been fantastic too, Mike. Uh, Corey King gets, uh, you know, recognized, but I, I thought he's one of the best players on the ice on Sunday. This guy, I want to talk about maybe somebody underappreciated in the league that goes unnoticed, but maybe that's a blessing in disguise. People don't pay as much attention to him, and, boy, he's been really effective for you this year. Yeah, Kinger's been great, you know, and, and our, our D core's been really good. Uh, I think we, we just had a, a meeting with the D, and we talked about how five out of the six have played in uh, – the national championship last year and uh, that's got to pay off here tonight the experience has to count for something and you know that's what uh, you know we as a staff when we acquired Bonnie that's the way we looked at it is adding another guy with uh, national championship experience and um, you know like I said it's got to pay off here tonight is this one of the toughest games to sit around and wait for the actual puck drop to get going yeah, it's been it's been a weird day, day and I'll, I'll be honest with you, Hardy. Just driving in, I was just trying to soak it in a little bit. A beautiful day out, and you know you hope you hope that you remember this for the positive, and uh, you know for everybody involved and and that. But uh, again, we gotta we gotta control our emotions, and we have to understand that it ain't gonna be handed to us, and, and that we've got to go out there and we've got to take it and earn it and. And uh, I, I'm confident in our group that, that they understand that, you know, and that they're um, mentally in the right space and, and that uh, they understand that they've got a job to do and that they'll get it done. You like to feed off the crowd tonight, Mike? I think it's going to be an absolute madhouse here. There's certainly a lot of buzz uh, via social media around the community when everybody's talking about it. Everybody's got their bomber gear on. And uh, tell you what, uh, I think it's going to be a very loud, uh, build, loud building once again. And, Really good opportunity for, for this organization just to showcase how historic the club is and just how historic this building is. Nothing beats the Whitney Foreman. I'll tell you what, there's a lot of people that are uh, going to be tuning in or, or watching that aren't uh, even from the area. Th 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 this is the talk of the hockey world, I believe, today. You wouldn't believe how many messages I've got and, and uh, you know, our organization's got. And, you know, captain of the 92-93 team, Chris Hatch, is, is making his way up here with Corey McGee. And, you know, I mean, that just speaks volumes to what it means to, you know, the the Bomber faithful, Bomber alumni. Um, I, I bet you there's going to be 20,000 people that are tuning into this game here here tonight. And uh, whether they're listening to you, Hardy, Nolan, or watching hockey TV or here at the game, you know, it's, it's a very exciting moment. Um, as you mentioned there, you know, the history and tradition of this organization. That's how these moments, that's how you build that history and tradition. Uh, like I said, hopefully we can come out on the right side of this thing and, uh, you know, put it in the history books and move on. Mike, thanks, Liz. Good luck at the pivotal game number seven here tonight. Thanks very much, Robert. Mike Reagan, the head coach of the Bombers, once again here on 1029 CFBR and FlintFontOnline.com. Clear. Family Homes knows that you want your home to be just that, yep. your own. They're ready to move homes and on-site builds are customized so that you get exactly what you want. Bailey Homes prides themselves on the quality of the build and providing you with every aspect of their expertise. With years of experience building and moving homes to the north, let Bailey Homes make your dream home a reality. Call toll free 1-855-773-0217 or visit bailey-homes.ca. You're on. SJHL Coaches Show continues. Jason Tartanic once again will join us here tonight. Jason, and here we are. Game seven, and I guess we've had everything else in this series. Why not a game seven? Yeah, I guess. Eh? Uh, yeah, I give some fun credit. They uh, played real well uh, in game six, and of course, in game seven. So here we are again. You know, it's interesting. I was looking at the stats today. 
and not one of these players is in the top ten of playoff scoring, and I think that's because it is how good the goaltending has been both ways. It's been tough to score. Yeah, I, I agree. So you really have to fight for your chances, right? So when teams do get chances, it's through hard work, and, and they earned it. So uh, that's been a tough series. That way it had to generate. Let's go back uh, to game six for a moment. Uh, tough collision between Koner and Chablesky, and i got to be honest with you, Jason, I didn't feel you were the same team after that. No, you know, that's still those are two key guys. And um, but a short staff, you know, you know affiliates or anyone certainly good. When it happens within game, it's it's hard when you lose two forwards like that. So, um, yeah, you know, maybe we should adopt a different game plan. But uh, um, it is what it is, and uh, we're back here, and we got to win one more. Either one of those guys get back in tonight? No, they're both all. That's a very tough loss for your team, especially with the way playing the smaller parameters in this building. But injuries are part of the game, and, you know, Flint has gone through a fair share as well. It's been, like I said, We've seen a little bit of everything in this series, and it's been tough. Very physically demanding and towering on both these teams, Jason. Yeah, I mean, I think both teams have been playing with injuries. And, um, you know, for us, we lost those two guys, and we're for O'Neill suspension, and Zeke won't be able to go tonight as well. So, um, obviously, Stewart hasn't played the whole series. So, those are five key guys, but that's playoff hockey, right? You gotta, you're going to go through injuries. Tough to win in the Whitney form, but you have done it in this series. Does it make it a little bit easier coming into Game Seven? The guys now have confidence knowing if they can win here. Yeah, I, mean, I think both teams have been tough to win the whole series. So um, you know, it's Game Seven; anything can happen. And, and uh, you know, I think uh, before this series, if you ask me, if, you know, you're gonna be playing in uh, Game Seven in this uh, series, we can take it. I'd say yeah. Um, unfortunately, we didn't. Uh, Sunday, but we're still in position to, to get one more win and, and uh, win the series. That's the problem is, the in the same boat. <laughs> they certainly are, but I'll tell you this, and this is my honest opinion, you played anything like a sixth place team in this series. Yeah, you know, I, I thought we were a better team than a sixth place. Uh, you know, I know every team, you know, for us, there's a lot of injuries, a lot of sickness. Um, we started off real slow and, you know, a big turnover for us, so, you know, no, I think we're a pretty good hockey team, better than what our record showed. And uh, I knew come playoff time, we'd, we'd give anyone trouble. Well, you've certainly done that. And, I mean, like I said, Game 7 here tonight, and uh, anything that really happened to Game 7, of course, it went uh, seven games last year. It was exciting. And, again, this time, how about the rivalry, Jason? Uh, the, the rivalry now, I mean, these two teams didn't know a lot about each other going into the final last year. The Epic, uh, of course, showdown, Centennial Cup, and this one now. Uh, th th I, this has got to be the best north-south rivalry in the league. Yeah, I, I have to agree with that. Uh, they, uh, hey, when you when you play in a final, and you lose or you win. Either way, like if we lost last year, I'm sure we would have some. You know, there's gonna be some hard feelings, there, right? Because they took something away from you that you wanted. And that's the nature of a game. Like tonight, we both want to win, and you know we're gonna try and take uh, their playoff hopes out. They're gonna do the same to us. So it's pretty natural to have some hard feelings and bitterness towards each other because you're playing for something that you really want and uh, so does the other team. So, um, but I think, I think when all the dust settles, I think all the players would um, would say to each other that they respect each other as hockey players and um, you know, both teams, um, you know, no fun fun has done a good job and I think we, we have too. So, um, yeah, there's, there's, there's some bitterness, hatred during the games, but at the end of the day, I think we both have respect as uh, in what both organizations have done. I agree. One last thing for you, Jason. Is it going to be huge to get a goal early to take the crowd out of the game? I think the key is just to keep it as close as possible, right? If they do get one, then only allow them to have one. That's what we did last game, right? Um, it's that second and third goal, I think. It's a fun, fun game's momentum when they get that second goal, right? They build that two goal lead. Um, we've seen it many times here. So for us, uh, we just want to keep it close because we believe we can always score a goal at some point. And uh, see what happens. I'm interested to see what type of show Herdlick and Laser Hume put on again here tonight. I mean, I mean that 66 save performance is something people are going to be talking about for a long time. And Laser is uh, good for him to come back and respond. And big save off Cody Davis there. 
Yeah, you know, in game six there, uh, Jason, you're up one nothing. Geez, he scores there, maybe a different outcome. So kudos to both these goalies. I mean, they're giving their teams a chance to win at the end of the day. That's what you want. Yeah, for goalies, you want them to play their best, right? In this type of game, both goalies, because you hate to see a goalie who has an option. There's nothing worse for them. It's not going right? So, you know, I hope both goalies have an excellent night, and uh, that takes a real good one to get by them. Listen, Jason, I appreciate all your time in the playoffs. I really thank you very much for making time for us. I know you're busy, you're preparing and doing stuff, but much appreciated. So thank you very much for doing this. And uh, uh, it is a game seven. I won't see you again after tonight, but uh, certainly good luck to your team tonight and, and in the future. Uh, I think you do a very good job. I think you're a very good coach, and uh, I do appreciate you uh, taking the time to do these interviews with me. So very, thank you very much. Oh, no worries. Always a pleasure to talk to you. Your first class. There he is, Jason Tartanic, the head coach of the Estevan Bruins, and we are underway. Rob Hart, Mike Slip, here we go. Game seven again. Flint Bon Bombers, Estevan Bruins. This time the game is in the Whitney form, and they are packed in here like you would not believe. Capacity crowd as the Bruins throw the puck in front of the bomber net. Duperot will swat it out. The puck will chase Bavick back inside the Estevan blue line. We talked a lot about Bavick's nice time in the series. Geez, how many minutes does he get tonight? Pass for Davis too far. Icing called against the Bruins, and we're underway. Mike Slip, boy, people are in here. You heard the... The ovation when the coaches came out. You heard the ovation when the players came out. <laughs> Might be a history-making night. Yeah, it's great to see, boy. It, it was so exciting last season, and here we are again. Uh, it, it's super. This team means everything to this community. Danchuk off the faceoff will fire it back of the Estevan goal. This is Davis. Last time he was in the Whitney Forum, a game that he won't forget. Babic will stick it around the board. Stuck a funny hawk comes out. Kane fires it back in. Here's a save, but Flint Bond's offside. Babic will grab it and take off. Here's Babic to center. Sends it high off the glass inside the Flint Bond zone. Puck chip and comes back out to center. Grabbed here by Runke. He'll play that one ahead looking for Wilson. Tanchuk knocked it down. And the puck comes back to center. Grabbed quickly here by Whittingham. Off his stick. Back to Wilson. Wilson played it ahead. Grabbed here by Kane. Spins and throws it back across the Estevan line. But quickly they get it out. Now it goes back in. This is Whittingham. Throws it back to Wilson. Wilson will take off at center. Wilson, a long shot again wide of the bomber. That's they're trying to pin that Flint Bond bomber D in deep, I think. Flint Bond will work it free. Can't clear it out. Held in by Whittingham. That one got blocked. Grabbed here by Mueller. He'll take off with Kane. Mueller fires it in. Big hop out front. Oh, Kane had a good chance, but he got uh, taken out of the play by the Bruin D-man. Here's Pangura back the other way. He sends it in. Picked up here by Hool inside his own zone. Banked it off the board. Picked up by Bridger. Richard tries to get away, gets that one ahead to a Mueller. Broken up by Babic. Richard will throw it back in offside. It hits Mueller. They'll blow it down with 18 or 5 to go. The only series still going in the SJHL. All the other three wrapping up, including some Alfred Mustangs and a Preston victory on Sunday. Really got uh, the power play going. Scored five power play goals en route to the 8 2 win to knock off LaRange. They'll no doubt be watching this one as well. And the outcome depends on who plays who. So. Like I said, Mike, slip the eyes of the hockey world tonight. I hope you can handle the pressure. They are up on us. 20,000 people. What's that? 20,000 people, according to Mike Reagan. <laughs> Made me a little nervous. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Never really thought about it until you brought it up. <laughs> Puck is deep inside the Bruins zone. Galetchin a shot. Easy save made here by Cam Hurtlicka. And boy, uh, these two goalies coming in. The numbers have just been absolutely spectacular. Laser Hume, like we said, a goals against a 1.83, a save percentage of 9.38. Hurtlicka, 2.52 goals against a save percentage of 9.41. Reminds me a lot of the Humboldt Flintlawn series last year. Yes. Shell and Ramsey going head to head. Yeah, absolutely. Bombers win the draw. Noah Hula Chanson. Once again, reaching out and grabbing out is Cam Hurtlicka, who seems to like playing in the Whitney Four. Mike uh, thought he looked a little bit, uh, well, football able to get to him a little bit in game six. But uh, boy. We talked about game five, and so far tonight, looks like he's got his composure. Yeah, so far. I really like that play Brock Mueller did a little while ago. I wish the Bombers would do it more. Take that shot off the backboards and get the trailer coming in for the rebound, because these boards are lively. Bruins win the face stop. They try to push it out. Held in by Richmond. Now it comes out. Picked up by Dupereau. He'll fire it back in, but knocked down this time by the Bruins. As they will grab it. That's Kalora, who is really good for them. On Sunday, big body. They'll need him to get going. Throws it back of the net. Bruins have it. They'll throw it back of the goal again. Richmond races over there. Kalora pinning off along the boards. Pangura will get it free. Knocked away here by Richmond. Richmond will get a hold of it. Poked it back to center. That's picked up here by Silvestri. He'll dump it across the line. Guy intercepts. Throws it back to center. 
try two goals in the series. We'll fire that one up over the crowd out of play. And everybody ducking for cover, but it hit the back wall. And I think everybody's all right. He nearly took uh, Cole Dupro's dad out there, <laughs> Rob. But, uh, yeah, he, that, uh, he, he got away on him on that one. Yeah. Based off outside the bomber line, Lees, Pierce, and Stibby will go to work. Von Strecken and Fry on the back end. Flynn Fon wins the draw. They caught the puck up. There's a chance right off the hop here for the Bruins' Barrow. What a big save by Harmon Laser Hill. Barrow, the Bruins' leading scorer coming into tonight. Oh, what a, what a bad giveaway that was. You can't do that. You can't do that. Laser uh, Hume just reacted at the right time. Yeah, he sure did. He, uh, he made a great save there. Boy, oh, boy, that. What do we always say, Rob? Turnovers and penalties win, uh, or lack of penalties win games. Good start here for the Bruins. One shot, but a heck of a scoring chance. Flip one, I'll chip it back across the Bruin line. This is Wilson. Beats it back to Whittingham. Whittingham along the boards. Knocked down here by Lees. Couldn't knock it down clearly. Puck is loose. They're after it. At the blue line. King shot. Hits a stick. Goes over top of the Bruin net. Pierce will race in. Had a great game for Flip one back on Sunday night. Skinny. Throws it back to the goal. That's intercepted by Runke. Flint Vaughn rolling puck again. They can't pick it up. Lifted the blue line. Knocked down by Pierce. He throws it back in. They're going to say the puck stayed in. I thought it came across, but it stays inside the zone. Here's King again. Knocked down in front of the net. Bruins get it ahead to Barrow. Barrow quickly to the center. Inside the Flint Vaughn zone. Laser Hume out of his net around the board. Runke waited for it. Throws it back out front. Grabbed here by Tanchuk. Tanchuk will lift it outside the zone. Kane tried to cruise in, but knocked away. But Bung gets it right back. Quick pass to Mercer. Babbitt takes him down. Buck rolls across the Bruin line. Grabbed by Miley. Played it ahead. Mercer knocked it down. Belt holds it in. Bouncing puck. Bruins get it back. This is uh, Tkochek, who made his debut with the injuries back in game number six. He's in there. Throws the puck in deep. Flintfawn intercepts. We'll throw it to the far corner. Flintfawn not really able to get going. A good game plan here by the Bruins early. Trombley had that one knocked away from him. Puck deep inside the Flint Juan zone. The Bruins looking to get it out front. Fry will slide it back of the net. Picked up by Mercer. Tried to head man it, but Babbitt will knock it down the blue line. His long shot deflects off Vaughn. Strecken goes wide. Mercer again inside his own zone along the board. Here to Trombley. Trombley. Big goal back in game six. Does flip it out. Knocked out with a high stick. Comes back to the Bruin line. Babbitt has got it. Plays it over to Miley. Back to Babbitt, up the middle on the take. Clore will chip it ahead into the glove that time. The boy has to have pretty good to start here tonight. Yeah, the Bombers came out pretty good. They were jamming up the center of the ice, but you're right. Esteban has really put on a little pressure here. Uh, they only have the one shot, but boy, oh boy, it was a dangerous one. Well, and I think uh, Jason Tartana kind of downplayed the first goal. I think they really want to get it done oh, to get course. the crowd yeah, out of it. Absolutely. Face off inside the Flint Juan zone. Cool. We'll rip that around the boards to Mueller. I mean, it's a gigantic crowd here. You get them going, it could be a factor tonight. So far, the Bruins have played pretty well the opening minutes. So Bombers will back that off the boards. It comes in on Hurtlicka. And he's going to pounce on that with Mueller and Bridger both racing in front of the net. The, three, the shots is 3 1, actually, in favor of Flint Juan. But again, all deep perimeter shots. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, they, but they had a couple of good scoring chances. They weren't. They didn't translate into shots on goal. But here we go. Richard Mueller, Galenchin up front. It's Richmond and Poole on the back end. Off the face off. Winfon tries to cover up here. The Bruins get the puck though. They quickly get it out. They're looking for Runke up the wing. Broken up by Hool. He'll get it out. On the stick though, Winningham, and he plays it right back in. Richmond waited for it. He'll knock it down. Had a little trouble handling it. Up the boards to Bridger. Trying to flip it ahead. Great play by Wilson to knock it down. Otherwise, galenshin has gone. Far wing. They had Mueller in behind everybody. Puck gets away from him. Goes on the side of the Bruin net. And grabbed here by Hurtlicka. A lot of uh, people out there in the Bomber Nation. A lot of people sending messages on social media today. Uh, Donovan Gates and son Kate both celebrating birthdays. Hoping for a Bomber victory. They're in Saskatoon, I believe. Our good friend James Spencer back in Flint Point. Yes. Still not able to make hockey games, but he's in the audience tonight. What a great man he is. Absolutely. Flint Point wins the faceoff. Gets it back to the point. Take a shot. That got blocked in front. Grabbed here by Stimmy, but he can't shoot it. And here comes Kalora back the other direction. Kalora down the wing. Inside the Flint Point zone. Puck chip back of the bomber net. It's laying there. Stimmy trying to get a stick on it. Picked up by Pandura, though. Tanger was really good the first few games of Flint Vaughn as well. Didn't notice him as much in game six, but he likes playing in this building. Smaller parameters, I guess. Puck lifted off the glass, back down the ice. Pierce chasing Babbitt. The puck squirts free. Picked up here by Miley. 
Miley will take off with it to center. Broken up by Silvestri. Here comes Silvestri with Dupero. Silvestri, long shot off the glove of Herdlicka. Dupero in the corner for Silvestri. Both these guys scored back at game six. Von Strecken a shot! Big seed that time by Herdlicka. Von Strecken again. Jumped on this one like a torpedo inside the Bruins zone. Back of the goal for Buckner. They got some offense out there for the Bombers right now. Here's Fry. Point, shot, blocked in front. Flintborn can't get it. Dupro's chance. That gets blocked. Picked up by Kalora off the glass, and they're going to want to try to get some fresh legs out there. Here's Buckner for Flintborn. Slides it ahead. Sylvester cuts in. Oh, good stick seat that time by Hurtlicka again. What a stop. Best chance tonight for the Bombers. Von Sprecken goes down. Takocha tried to get away from him, but he's. Von Sprecken still able to take a piece of him to knock him off the play. Flintborn comes close. Here's Von Sprecken. Up the wing, gets left, box sat down, flipped it in on goal, save is made. Picked up by Fry. Von Sprecken up to Dupro. Fry to chip it out. Held in here by Forrest. Over to what? Uh, to Kochuk. To Kochuk. Run throw it out front. Bruins have it. They center it out front, hits a leg. Sabula on the guy. Spins, fires. That gets blocked. Puck comes back to center. Grabbed by Wilson. He folds back to his own blue line now. He'll snap it inside the flint Blonde zone. Icing against Estevan. What a save by Cam Hurtlicka. Uh, absolutely, and what a block by Cole Dupero. He, uh, that stung him a bit. Uh, he'll be okay, but uh, yeah, boy, oh boy. They had some chances there. Shot the puck over. Uh, they had one. Their Cam had a hard time gloving it, but uh, it was high. Uh, but some good pressure there by the Bombers. From by Mercer and Kane up front for flip flop at Richmond. And Noah Hole, the only guy to score for the Bombers here in game number five. Trombley out front. Oh, it goes through the legs of Kane. What a pass that was by Trombley. Hole will get it at center. They tap it back in. Trombley racing in for it. Wilson poked in the corner. Trombley to the blue line. Hole knocked it down, but the Bruins get it back. Barrow. Chance to get the breakaway going. That goes off the stick of Richmond. Davis will pick it up deep at the flint Blonde zone. Throws it out front. Kane is there. Played it ahead. Richmond knocked it down. Played it back to Mercer. Mercer down the wing. They're offside. A wicked slasher by Wilson as well. More shout-outs to throw out there for people on social media. Don McGinnis, listening in North Battleford, big SKHL fan. Larry Empey, of course, uh, former Humboldt Bronco. His son, uh, Tyson, played for the Bombers. He's in foot current tonight. Ron and Ray Watts, listening out in St. Albert, Alberta. Big hello to them as well. Bombers win the draw at center. This is Noah Hool. Spins, fires. That went wide of the mark again. There comes Galenchik flying in there. Babic throws it. Oh, comes out front. Richmond a chance. Shoot, just grazed the left post. Another good chance by the Bombers there. Bruins will get it down the uh, ice, and a good thing for them is it won't be icing. They'll be able to uh, get some fresh troops out there without having to give up a faceoff in their own zone. Davis will knock that down. Played it ahead. Richmond inside his own zone. Barrow on top of him. Barrow hauled down. Here's Runke off the side of the Bomber net. Danchuk back of the goal. Runky all over him. Boy, these teams battling it out again. Team 7. What a series it's been. Galenchik. Nice job to flip it out. Bruins bring it back in, but uh, definitely came across the line. 11-17 to go. Opening period. Still nothing, nothing. Bombers coming close, but so far, Cam Hurtlicka weathering the early storm. Absolutely. Boy, Brock Beeler's come out like a uh, house on fire here. He's been uh, around that net, and what a shot by uh, Alex Von Sprecken. He has got a howitzer. He hits the net, boy. It's pretty lethal. Yeah. Buckle roll back inside the Bruins zone. Picked up here. Fired down the ice. Buckle roll back. King's got it. King gets it out. Picked up here by Stimmy, who's had all kinds of exciting moments this series. Maybe tonight will be the night that he breaks one in. This will chase Whittingham back. Whittingham back to the Bruinette. Lees will chase him, and he'll bring it out. Passed a little. Keegan a little to center. The veteran from last year, of course, championship team. Estevan once again offside. Blown down. 10.47 to go. Wow. In the opening period. Started out like we thought it would, Rob. Exciting end to end, really. Um, the Bombers got set up there for a little while, and the Estevan got set up. But uh, not a whole lot of pressure uh, uh, sustained pressure except for those two times. 6 2 is the Eddie's Family Food Shots in favor of Flint One. And their two best opportunities, I think they missed the net on both of them. Yeah. Here's a lead pass to center picked up here by Fillion. His shot will hit a stick goal to play again. And that's one thing we talked a lot about in the series is uh, just that the amount of shot blocks and stuff. It's going to be tough to get shots through again tonight. Both sides, yeah. As they said, Cole Dubrow with a great shot block. And 
You know, the uh, the, uh, the uh, Bru- uh, Bruins aren't afraid to block them either. No. They've gotten better as the series has gone yeah. on. Flintbone's been blocking shots blocks down the stretch. Forrest set for the face off here against Blocker. Flintbone wins the draw quickly outside the zone. Babbitt will have to race back there. There's a couple dangerous bomber forwards. Silvestri and Dupro on top of him. They force Babbitt back in. He'll swing the pass ahead. Picked up here by Miley. To Hochik at center with Donick. Tanchuk took it from him. He throws it back across the line. Look out. Dupro flying in on Babbitt. Dupro in the corner. Loses the handle. Miley will pick it up. The big Bruin defenseman back in his own net. Off the glass. That's scooped up here and fired back to center ice. Trapped here by Dakota. He throws it back to Babbitt. Babbitt just gets rid of it. Back to Miley. Dakota at center. And over the bomber line. Chipped down by Runke but knocked away from him. Let's one back the other way. Kane takes the stretch pass. Kane. Dropped it back to Mercer. Mercer with lots of traffic. Will rip that one wide. Trombley will hold it at the right line. His shot blocked in front that time by Guy. Guy will carry it to center. Guy sends it back inside the Flin Flon zone. Picked up by Von Sprecken. Back of his own net. Had to stop there. Now he'll reset. This is Fry. Lifts it off the glass. Puck bounces. Runke knocked it down at center. Played it ahead that time for Barrow. Barrow's been dangerous for the end tonight. Brought it back to Runke. Runke, a backhander. Flips that one over top of them. A good opportunity there. Bruins keep it in deep. Runke again battling with Von Sprecken. They tie up in the corner. Mercer works it free. That's picked up here by Kane, but he can't clear. Kane, another opportunity, comes back to Von Spreck, and that time he'll bounce it off the boards and get it out. And Getzlaff goes back to get it inside his zone. Gets away from him. A little trouble handling it. Getzlaff is back. Fired it off the boards. Just gets it past Kane. Puck a roll inside the flip-flop zone. Richmond picked it up. Barrel still out there on top of him. Up the boards to Houle. Houle the center. Streaking down the left side. Long shot. No problem. Hurt like a... He'll reach up and grab that. 8.49 to go here in this opening period. Still no goals. 6-2. The Eddie's Family Food Shot Clock in favor of Flintbaum. There's the horn. Media timeout. Let's take a break. You're listening to Great Furniture Flintbaum Bomber Playoff Hockey on 102.9 CFAR and FlintbaumOnline.com. Clear. Time at Frontline Sport and Leisure. All right, sir. Custom build and design a 2024 Polaris sled exactly how you want it. With exclusive features, options, and a special warranty only available during snow check. Choose your color, tracks, windshield, chocks, and more. There are over a thousand combinations to choose from. Now on until March 29th. To find out more about snow check, visit Frontline Sport and Leisure or call 688-3333. Frontline Sport and Leisure, building dreams one sled at a time. Hey, Northern Manitoba. University College of the North is cheering for our Northern hockey team, the Lin Flon Bombers. We know that this is a big deal, and we want to wish the best in the playoffs. A healthy sports tradition and education go hand in hand. At UCN, we believe that here, you can win. Good luck and go Bombers. Ten seconds. You're on. Face up in the Bruins zone. Right to Herdlicka. Off the draw. Great save on Wackler. And Herdlicka's got that glove hand going tonight. What a great stop that was. And he appears to be in the zone once again. So he likes playing in this Whitney Forum, doesn't he? He sure does. And again, we said it as nauseum got to get people in front of that. You've got to make it hard on Cam Hurd. Like I, you know, nudge him a little. I'm not saying hit him, but... Well, you gotta, you he got to... He sees it, he stops it, right? Yeah, you got to make it hard for him. Dupro knocked it down. His shot got blocked. Picked up here by Davis. Quickly ahead to Barrow. Barrow bumped off the play by Hula. Good defensive play. Buck roll back to the bomber zone. Richmond will chip that up the board to Dupro. Knocked it down, wasn't sure where it was. Comes back to Silvestri, feeds it back to Hull. Off the left side, chat for Dupero. Dupero down the left side, moves in, shoots it. Hurt the cow well out of the net, he'll make another big save. Silvestri slides in there, going to the front of the net. But boy, Cole Dupero, that's the guy you want here the puck yeah. down the wing. Is it not? That hand didn't it didn't show any ill effects there. He's got a rocket for a shot. And you know it, you know it's got to hurt him to take those shots. Hey, that was a risk there, but uh, uh, he's... he's Looking like the cold Uber, we know. So Vestry will take the face off against Little once again inside the Bruins zone to the right. Of Cam Hurtlicka still scoreless here in the opening period. The Bruins have battled tough here again tonight. Boy, what a series they've had. A lot of people uh, thought Flint won the overwhelming favorite, but boy, the Bruins have battled and uh, have come down to this game seven. And it's tight again here tonight. 
Babnik back in the net, picked up here by Miley. Miley going to skate with it here. Miley to center. Sends it inside the football. Took a funny hawk, came out front. Lisa Hume does see it. Bruins keep it in. Chance again. Kalora walking right in. Good save mm. there. Lisa Hume got his right shoulder on it. Little in the corner. Good move there. Tries to cut out front. Lisa Hume gets his paddle on it. Trombley gets the puck to line, but it comes right back and up with one of third. But grabbed again by Miley. Played it back to Lynn. Little across the line. Long shot. Lisa Hume will kick that one out. Big rebound in the corner. Grabbed here by Mercer. Mercer's got it. Try to play that ahead to King, but it hit a stick. Gets left, intercepts, throws it back in. King there. Bruins are changing. Back to Tanchuk. Tanchuk at center. Runs it back across the Estevan line. Guy is there. He'll rip it around the boards. Vaughn struck it, trying to get back in position. Picked up here and fired back in by Philia. Bombers knock it down. They try to clear it out. Gets left. Good work to knock it down and keep it in. Puck comes in front of the bomber that grabbed here by Fry. Off the boards looking for Mercer. It looks like he's gassed to me, but he'll race after it anyway. Gets left in there as well with Mueller. Picked up by Mercer, back of the net. Mercer, great uh, energy to get back there. Vaughn Spreckett, shot! Oh, her look at the save. Traffic in front that time might slip. Yes, Richard sir. will knock it down. Here, I got right on top of him, actually, in the blue, uh, blue paint there. Bridger will work it free. Bridger back of the net. Wrap around out front. Oh, Mueller shoots a block. Rebound. He can't get it to go. Another one. A backhander. And Hurtlicka turned that one away. Cam Hurtlicka again. Denying the Bombers time after time after time. What a goal setting performance. Galenshin on side. He knocked it down. Shot went to the corner. Mueller after it. Stick tied up in the corner. Duck free this time by Galenshin trying to get free. He's held up along the boards. Here's Mueller. Mueller to the front of the net. Poked away. Hurt look get the poke check on him that time as well. Vaughn Strecken back at center. Plays this one ahead to Mueller. Bumped off the play. Barrel will drop it back inside the Bruins zone for Babic. Six minutes to go. Opening period. Still no score. Barrel takes the pass at center. Across the bomber line. Hey, good shoot. Good left pad save there. Boy, he really used to do that as a screen. That's a big save by Harmon Laser Hill. Play comes back inside the Bruins zone. Miley's got it. He'll take off again. The Bruins defense really rushing the puck here tonight. I'm telling you right now, Mike, it's really interesting. They had the big ice surface at Estevan. The Estevan defense didn't rush the puck at all like they are so far in the yeah, opening period yeah, tonight. Yeah. Best player on the ice so far, Rob Brock Mueller, in my opinion. He's, uh, boy, oh boy, he had three shots there. He's going to the greasy spot. They use him on that breakout pass uh, uh, a lot, and uh, he's just relentless on the puck. Brock Mueller's having a whale of a game so far. Yeah, he doesn't mind going to the front of the net, I'll tell no. you that. 542 to go, face off outside the bomber blue line. This is Richmond for Flint One. Played it ahead to Silvestri. He'll tap that one back in. Bouncing puck. Whittingham fired that one around the boards. At the blue line. Held in by Hool. Bouncing puck in front. Walker trying to get free. Oh, he trips up oh. the sky. Penalty coming up here against the bombers. Walker taking down Lee Little in the corner. Adam. And it sounds like the Whitney Ford faithful not happy with the call. Well, I think Rob is that regular season. That is a penalty, but he let him. But they let a bunch of stuff very similar to that go earlier, and not just on the Bombers. But Interference are calling it. Yeah, same uh, with the uh, Estevan Bruins. So, uh, boy, oh boy, the Bomber penalty kill has to come up big here. Yes, 5:26 to go. Opening period, a great chance for the Bruins here so far. They're weathering the early storm. The crowd's looking for a reason to get excited, get puffed up, and the Bruins are doing a good job keeping them out of it. And it's a big, big power play, like Mike Slip indicated. So far in the series, by the way, the Bruins on the power play have scored four times on 22 opportunities. Buck deep inside up to that territory, or deep in flip on territory, rather, as they. Babic gets to the blue line. He hangs on to it. Babic outside the right circle. Let's the rip. That didn't miss by much. Miley knocked it down. He'll hold it in in the corner. Kalora back of the net. Fry's got him tied up. They'll work it back to Miley again. Miley slides the pass along the board. That's picked up by Little. Back to the right point to Babic. Babic up front. One timer. Miley. Good save. Puck is loose. But one gets it free. Bruins come close there. Miley will hold it in. Chance again from an off angle stop. Laser Hill re- loose puck picked up by Mercer. And down the ice it goes. A minute 15 to go on the power play. 439 to go in the period. Bruins coming close here on the PP. This is Miley at his blue line. Now he'll fire it in. Barrow, who's been really tough, races in there. 
Bombers working in the port corner. Picked up by Sylvester. Nice job down the ice. It goes. Stopped here by Hurtlicka. Runky will take over. Or sorry, it looks like Babic's going to take it. 50 seconds to go on the power play. Here comes Babic to center. Babic throws it in deep. Bombers, I think we're yelling for offside here, but didn't appear to be. Puck bounces inside the Bombers zone. Puck comes out. Babic will throw it back to his goaltender. He had no choice as he was tied up. So Babic goes back to retreat. 30 seconds to go in the power play. Babic again inside his own zone. This is Babic. Up the wing here. Picked up by Davis. Knocked away by Von Sprecken. He'll poke it out. Wilson comes back. Played it back to blue line that time for Whittingham. This is Runke. Runke quickly across the Bomber line. Shovels it in for Davis. Davis in deep. Back to Runke. Blue line for Wilson. Runke. Inside the left circle, out front, back door, winning hand, can't find the handle, puck on the side of the net, and finally grabbed here by Harmon Laser. No, but boy, that estimate power play created some really good chances. Yeah, the Bombers have done a nice job, though, of getting a hold of the puck. Lucas, uh, Laser Hugh made a great save, but the puck was laying there, and uh, Lucas Fry got his stick on it and was able to clear it. They've been able to cover up pretty well there, so... Uh, Three seconds left. Holden Getzlav, first cousin of Ryan Getzlav. Oh, is that right? So they're from Regina then? Yeah, Nolan uh, Cole mentioned that on the broadcast uh, Sunday night. I, I was wondering because that's yeah. not a real familiar name, right? No, I was I, I often meant to ask. Power play is over. The puck will squirt up and score in the glove. I believe Laser and has got it. That'll do it for the power play. 322 remaining and a good, like you said, good job by the Bomber penalty kill to kill that. After that, got a couple guys in back door. And that looks better than any power play they had on Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Boy, you watch Calera. There he is, going to take the face off in that power play. He just planted himself in front of Laser U. He's looked really good as the series has moved on. And with the, the injuries that they've got, he's going to be a very pivotal thing for them, a very pivotal player for them tonight. Buck in front of that bomber net. The Bruins are after it again. Goal line scramble. Flint Bottle will dig it free. Mercer quickly to center ice. This is Trombley. Trombley will dump it in. Mercer will chase it down. Took a funny hot. Getzlaff did get a stick on it. Little comes over to help him out. 12-8 now with the shots, by the way, for Eddie's family foods tonight. Tangura over to Kalora. In the glove again. Laser Hill will grab it. Keegan Little to the front of the net. And the Bombers forced to hang on with 2.56 to go here in the opening period tonight. 12-10. Bruins, uh, very, they're going to be happy with the, the, the road period so far. Yeah, for them. absolutely. Uh, just want to say hello to my good friend Mike Cork. He uh, just had surgery, so he can't make it to the game. He's at home. Uh, I believe he's watching it on Hockey TV. So get better soon, Mike. We need you back to work. Forrest set for the base stop against Bockler. Inside Flint Flon territory. Bombers try to get the puck, but it's the Bruins again that have it now. It comes out. Nice job by Sylvester. Trying to get going at center. Knocked away from him. Fired back inside the Flint Flon zone. Laser Hume will stop that back of the goal. Into the corner for Noah Hull. Hull's got it. Swings the pass back to Richmond. Richmond up the right side. Great pass to Sylvester. He'll tap it in deep. Whittingham is there. Knocked him down the corner. Dupro after. To the point. Knocked down by Hull. Sends it back in deep. Bouncing puck. Dupro's got it. Back of that. Here's Cole Dupro. Cole Dupro to the front of that. A backhander. Redirected to the corner. Picked up by Hull. Hull back there. Tied up along the board by Wilson. Sylvester as well. Sylvester. Trying to knock it down. Battling with Wilson. The puck is pinned up along the boards here by Fillion. 2.08 to go in the opening period. Fillion's got it for the Bruins. He'll flip it down the ice. This will chase Richmond back. Gets a stick on it. Knocks it down inside his blue line. Throws it back to center. This is Mueller. The Bockler. Oh, he tapped it outside the zone. Bockler again. Got a little bit of room. He can motor. Bockler. Backhander. Babbitt will redirect that over the glass and out of play. And not a lot of open ice out there. It looks like the guy's got some room, and the team does a really good job yeah. taking away that open ice. Both teams have been gotten some great uh, sticks on the pucks, and, and that's a, a case in point right there. Uh, uh, take a blocker moving in, and somebody got their stick on his backhand and sent it uh, into the into the netting. Bombers win the faceoff. King's long shot. Not sure who that hit, but that was like a pinball went wide. Gets past Tan. Chuck Davis is after it. Battling here with King. King stands his ground, gets the puck out. Barrel will have to poke it back to Babbitt. Babbitt played that ahead to Runke. Intercepted by Mueller. Goes through Miley's leg. Babbitt will chase it down. A minute and a half to go in this scoreless opening period. Knocked down by Bridger in the corner. Here's Bridger to work back to the net. Bridger. Hang on. Fanned on it. Now he gets the shot away. That goes wide. Here's Tanchuk. Tries to hold it in. He does. 
Galenshin throws a body check, gets the puck free. Galenshin trying to work his way back up front. Puck left it outside the zone. They had Kane racing in there, but he didn't see him. Went on up their own blue line. This is Corey King back to center right. Trombley will slap her in and then go out for a change. Babic back off the boards to the Bloodborne Bomber blue line. Von Strecken off the glove that time of Mercer. Picked up by Kalora, fired back inside the Flintstone zone. This is Fry, back of his own net. Bouncing puck, almost knocked away from him. King got to go back and help out. Good four check here by the Bruins late. 41 seconds to go in the period. Bruins trying to get this late goal here and really take the crowd out of the game. Puck is scored free, though, and Mercer's got it. One last dash for Flintstone is Trombley. Flipping it ahead for Kane. Wilson got back, knocked it down. It was in front for Mercer. He couldn't uh, pick up the, the loose puck. Swan Sprecken at center. He'll hammer it back in. 21 seconds to go. Guy, the Estevan D-man. Dropped it back in the net. That's picked up this time by Wilson. Wilson plays it ahead to Keegan Little. Keegan Little in the center. Down the wing. Play broken up by Fry. Not sure where it is. Now they move it ahead to seven seconds to go. Vakler. Back to Silvestri. Silvestri. Hangs on. Shoots it. Turned away by Hurd. Look up. Loose puck to the corner. Vakler on it. But that's going to do it for the opening period here tonight. Mike Slept. And goals once again tough to come by with these two goaltenders here tonight. Absolutely, and shots very close, 12 to 10. It is, I think it's, I'm going to call that, well, it is a draw on the scoreboard, but I'm going to call that period a draw for play. Uh, both teams had good chances, some great defense. Uh, boy, oh boy, the puck seems to be bouncing a lot for both teams, so uh, it's going to be interesting to see what happens next. It's scoreless after one, game seven. Very entertaining. And again, I think when you get into a game seven situation like this, things do tighten up a little bit yes. again because nobody wants to make that mistake. It's like overtime. Yeah, you know, they're, you're, overtime's a lot of times when they start, it's, you know, just feeling it out yep. a bit. And see, in game six, Estevan's got the one game end, so they can take some chance. Yes. They have to play with urgency. They're playing a lot more complete game tonight than I saw out of them back on Sunday night. Yeah, absolutely. We'll take a break. The first intermission show for the co op is coming up. It's the Bombers, it's the Bruins, it's Game 7 of this SJHO quarterfinal, and it's happening once again on 102.9 CFER and FlintWannOnline.com. Clear. Two and Chicken Jeff. Nine. Seven until close every Tuesday night. You can Clear. enjoy their famous Chef Burger for $2 when you purchase an on-tap draft. Plus, Wild Wing Wednesdays every Wednesday night from 7 till close. Order a grown-up beverage and receive an order of Jumbo Chef Wings for free. Specials Tuesdays and Wednesdays, but at Chicken Chef for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, it always feels like home. Dine in or take out at Chicken Chef, proud sponsors of this Bomber broadcast. Hud Bay is proud to be a sponsor of this Bomber broadcast. From donations for bursaries, hockey schools, clubs, community events, charities, and so much more, Hud Bay has supported our community with dedication and generosity, contributing to events and organizations. Hud Bay thanks the people of Flin Flon for their continued support. You're busy. And nobody knows that more than you. And you forget things, like appointments, where you put your keys, even to eat. Just a friendly reminder from Eddie's Family Foods to get a bite from the grab-and-go section or the full flavor of the meat department. Eddie's knows that for your family, you can't forget. So remember, they have fresh storm Ten seconds. you can't get anywhere else. Eddie's Family Foods, your uptown grocery store, still big enough to serve you and small enough to care. You're on... Welcome back to the Whitney Forum. We're in the opening intermission. Scoreless between the Bombers and Bruins here tonight. Game number seven. Shots fairly close. 12-10 in, or 13-10 now in favor of Flint Flon. And uh, I'd have to echo what Mike Slips said. Pretty even period. Flint Flon got a couple chances. But so did the Bruins in particular on that power play. And uh, boy, both goalies coming up with some big, big saves here tonight. And for whatever reason, goals, uh, it's, been, it's really been chintzy in Flint Flon the last couple of games. Well, obviously, the, oh, it's chintzy in Estevan for a couple of games too. But... Again, with it being a game seven, nobody wants to make a mistake. Nobody wants to take a chance or, or a real uh, gamble. But one thing I have noticed, again, an adjustment from the Bruins. Their defense rushing the puck far more than they than they did in game yeah, six. Yeah, absolutely. You, you know, they, uh, they it, the little ice, maybe the, the cause of that. Although with the big ice, you got more room to roam. But, uh, yeah, it's very interesting. You know, Rob, I thought the, you know, we talked about the teams coming out a little tentative. I thought the fans were a little quiet for as big a crowd this is and the Flintlon crowd. So, 
it's a, the, the Bombers have to get the crowd into it, and the uh, Estevan Bruins have to keep the crowd out of it. Well, they've done that. I think they've flipped on a couple times we're trying to get into it, and had a couple chances. Again, if they can get that goal, that's obviously yeah. going to get everybody kind of going yeah. here. But, uh, well, it won't be easy on Cam Hurtlicka again here tonight, who's brought his A game. Both these goalies fantastic. And uh, the two biggest uh, stars in this series so far, like I said, not one player in either one of these clubs, the top ten in scoring. Yeah. And that, I think, is because of how good the goaltending's been. Absolutely. It's, uh, you know, you don't, it's rare you don't see a bomber in the top ten. Well, and it doesn't help either that uh, Trompley yeah, and Dupro only Dupro played Dupro the one us. game. Yeah, absolutely. We will uh, take a break. So, again, no score after one. Shots 13-10 in favor of Flintbone. The Bruins 0 for 1 in the power play. It'll be interesting. The Bombers get some power plays. Again, with all that firepower and those two big power play producers back. Trombley, 18 power play goals. Or, sorry, Dupro, 18 power play goals. Trombley, 15 power play goals. Again, if Flintbone gets a couple opportunities, that could be a very big challenge for us to that as well. Absolutely. So, uh, it's going to be a great second. Some of these two teams are tied after one period of play here so far in the postseason. What do we have? When Estevan is tied after one, they're two and one, which means that Flint would be one and two when tied after one so far in this playoff series. We'll take a break. One of the stalwarts of the Flint Palm Bomber Blue Line, Reese Richmond, going to join us here in the opening intermission. He's our Creighton Pizza Player Profile. He'll join us next, and we hope you're enjoying Creighton Furniture Flint Palm Bomber Playoff Hockey once again on 1029 CFER and Online.com. Look at all the Clear. features on my new washer and dryer. This one is for extra spin. And with this Kid. one here, I can program a, a delayed start. Though I haven't figured that one out yet. Oh, and it's got all these lights over here. I have no idea what they mean. Oh, and over here. Sophisticated, not complicated. With the Whirlpool washer and dryer from Creighton Furniture and Appliance Center, you get the technology without the confusion, and you can ask all your questions before you buy. Whirlpool washer and dryers are simple and efficient, and when you get your Whirlpool at Creighton Furniture and Appliance Center, you know what you're taking home. It's a great time for a new Ford F-150 from your friends in Northland Ford. Start your journey with 3.99% APR purchase financing for up to 72 months on select 2023 F-150 models. Plus, eligible Ford owners get a $750 bonus for a limited time. Already love the truck you're driving? Come check out their huge selection of NV rims that will make any model of truck or SUV pop. Just stop by or call and ask for the parts department. Northland Ford in Flint Flon, where they're loaded up on trucks and proud to be the dealership you tell your friends about. He's in there all by himself with the door closed. Let's investigate. Come on, don't you knock? Oh my, that's a lot of Creighton's pizza. There's not only pizza, but lasagna, fried rice, salad. Look, burgers and wings by the dresser. Just having some Creighton's pizza. What did you think I was doing? By myself, in my room? Ten seconds. Door closed. Of course, Creighton's pizza to satisfy all your appetites. 688-2080. Fight for the last slice. You're on. Welcome to our first intermission, the Pride of Forest, Manitoba. Reese Richmond will join us here tonight, Reese. And uh, what can I say? You guys did what you had to do to get the series back to Flint Flon. I know you're disappointed with that game on Friday. Certainly not the effort. I mean, you should have won the game, but you got to, you know, tip your hat to their goalie. He did what he had to do. But saying that, what a performance from you guys on Sunday night. And I just got a sense, you know, making the trip down with you, everybody seemed at ease. It didn't really seem like anybody felt their backs were against the wall. It looked like a pretty loose group going into that game. Uh, yeah, I mean, our, our team has a lot of mojo. I mean, that's obviously a tough loss on Friday. But like you said, uh, their attendee played well. And, uh, you know, playoffs, once you lose, you gotta, you, you got to get past and focus on the next game. So we try not to dwell on uh, a loss too much and uh, just focus on the next game. And, that's what we did and took care of business. Estevan all over again, game seven all over again, but the difference being at the Whitby Forum. I mean, that's why you guys play so hard down the stretch. Uh, I guess you live for these type of moments, but I'm sure you're pretty happy it's here and not in their building here again tonight. Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, we have the advantage here tonight. Just uh, being used to this uh, ice surface, uh, a lot smaller. Um, things happen quick here. Um, and then, obviously, the fans are pretty crazy here, so... We'll have the fans behind us, and it uh, should be a good one tonight. You guys got Trombley and Dupereau back uh, for game number six. How big of a boost was that? Oh, crazy to have those two guys back. They're uh, two dominant players in our lineup, so um, they, they help out a lot. And I, I'm sure it gets the other team thinking twice as well. 
Well, well, now they both scored in game number six, and with just a mood going in, did it feel like a different locker room having known that those guys were going to be in there that night? Yeah, I think the guys had, uh, you know, a bit more confidence for sure. Uh, I mean, Duke, he's got, what, 36, 35 yeah. goals on the year. Tremblay, he's just dominant when he's out there. Uh, so, it, obviously, it uh, boosts the morale and confidence in, in the locker room, and uh, uh, it's just great to have him back in the lineup. You, you've been logging a lot of minutes. I mean, you logged a lot of minutes in the regular season, in particular the postseason. You played a ton. I know it's been tough, these 10-hour trips, uh, but you've been getting the minutes, you've been responding, and, uh, boy, I, I think you've had a great year and a great uh, series so far. Uh, how would you rate your play? Um, I think it's been good. I mean, uh, doing anything to help the guys get a win. making your life harder to get that uh, championship so uh, yeah just just doing whatever I can to help the guys to me this seems like such more than just a it just doesn't seem like a typical opening round series it seems like so much more doesn't it yeah it does it you know what game seven in the first round and it feels like a game seven in the championship uh, final right now but um, yeah it's it's gonna be a great uh, atmosphere tonight and it's gonna feel like a game seven of the final that's for sure you guys really feed off the crowd too don't you yeah, yeah, we use them to our advantage. They're uh, they're great every night. Um, loud, and uh, the Bruins obviously don't like it, so it's good. Yeah, there's no question about it. If you guys could get an, an early goal tonight, Reese, I mean, uh, the roof might literally come off this place. Yeah, yeah, the roof might come up and, or come off. Uh, uh, but a, a goal early on would uh, definitely put them on their heels and give us uh, a great advantage. So. I know you've had to fight through injuries, but a lot of depth guys did well down the stretch. I mean, uh, like we said, you played a lot of minutes. Corey King, the back end's been pretty strong. But a lot of guys not used to playing a lot of time have done well. And, I mean, finishing third place could be a big factor winning the series now, having that home game here tonight. Yeah. Uh, those guys that uh, stepped up uh, did a fantastic job. Um, I mean, you know, we, we gave ourselves a chance for home ice advantage uh, going forward. So, um it's been great what those guys did, and now uh, we just got to take care of business. Consummate veteran. You played the Centennial Cup. You're, of course, a big fixture for the run last year. Saying that, are you a little bit nervous tonight? Uh, obviously, you're going to have some jitters uh, for Game 7. I mean, it's do or die tonight. Um, but uh, I have a lot of confidence in our group, um, so I think we'll be fine tonight. And you're only going to get better as these other guys come back. I mean, you still got Matt Egan. you still got Jaden. Another two really... Mercy and Egan, two really good hockey players, still not in uniform tonight. Boy, you don't want to put the cart before the horse, but the down the stretch, you get those two guys, two brand new fresh bodies, and this team could still make a lot of noise here. Oh, for sure. Um, I think with a full lineup, we are one of the most dangerous teams in the league, if not the dangerous. Um, but yeah, it's it's going to be it's going to be good to get those guys back in the lineup down the stretch. Absolutely. With all the big games you had to play in last year, does that make it a little bit easier for you going into Game Seven tonight? Uh, it definitely uh, calms the nerves a bit, that's for sure. Um, but uh, I just try to do what I do, um, do what I can out there. I know I talked to you a few weeks ago in York, but i got to ask again for people who didn't hear that interview again. The biggest moment for you, is there a single moment that jumps out at you, Reese, of your football and bomber career? Uh, that's a tough question. Uh, probably just, you know, the run that we had last year was special, and... Uh, I think just this year was special as well to, to have an opportunity to do, uh, to do it again. Um, so uh, that's got to be my highlight. Putting on that Bomber jersey is such a special thing. Does it make it even extra special for you that your brother played for this hockey club as well? Is that something that uh, you take a lot of pride in? Yeah, absolutely. It's, uh, it's nice to follow in his footsteps. Um, he kind of paved the way for me here. Um, but, yeah, throwing on that Bomber jersey is, uh, is special for sure. I know it took a lot to get you here. There was all kinds of red tape and, and other things that went on, but, boy, I think you must be pretty happy with how it all turned out for you. Absolutely. Great to see you, Reese. Uh, good luck. Uh, biggest game of the season for this club. You know the fans will be behind you. You're telling me lots of personal friends and family coming up as well. Yeah, yeah, I got lots of family coming up. Two, car, uh, two cars, a family, so it, uh, it'll be good. Did you ever get nervous playing in front of them? Uh, no, not too nervous. Listen, thanks for this. Good luck tonight. should be a lot of fun. Thank you very much. Reese Richmond, our great pizza player profile here on 1029 CFAR and FlintFawnOnline.com.
Clear. Staple items like bread and buns or just pizza Three. items, muffins, cookies, and pies. So good you think you're dreaming, but you're okay, not. Okay, and I got uh, North of greetings from Carter Lowe from Gerald, Saskatchewan is listening. Because the co-op serves up hot and delicious baked goods every single day. And the only place better than their bakery is Mom's Kitchen, and that's debatable. The North of 53 Co-op, you're at home there. Hunt Bay is proud to be a sponsor of this Bomber broadcast. From donations for bursaries, hockey schools, clubs, community events, charities, and so much Ten seconds more. left in this one. Supported our community with dedication and generosity. Gerald Saskatchewan. Hunt Bay thanks the people. Jerry's world, apparently. Continued support. Wicka, wicka, wicka. Bubbly sparkling water is the best. It has the fizz that gives the zest. With lots of flavors, there's no contest, cause you know bubbly. Uh, what are you doing? Just rapping about bubbly sparkling water to tell people how good it is. Is that really necessary? Well, you, you, you know, I wanted to, you, you, um, you know. Um. Why don't you just tell them that bubbly sparkling water has 15 different flavors, no sugar, no calories, and it gives you that refreshing and delicious Ten seconds. you crave. I think that's a better idea. Arctic Beverages, proud supplier of bubbly sparkling water. Crack a smile. You're on. And the two teams have made their way back on the ice. That means the second print coming up here momentarily. Nothing, nothing after one. Put one out. Should be growing 13 to 10, but a pretty even, Steven period. Boy, first goal tonight going to be very interesting. So many yeah. different scenarios either way. We talk about Estevan getting the first goal. They take the crowd out of it. Maybe sit back and force football to take some chance. Football gets the first goal. Obviously, the crowd goes cuckoo. And, you know, they, they get some momentum too. Boy, first goal. Big, big factor now, right? Yeah, in this series, I mean, there's not that many goals scored. Yeah. We're underway. Walker taking the draw here against Runke. The Bombers win the face off. This is Fry. So Vesper will chip it ahead. Dupro quickly across the Estevan line. He'll throw that one in deep. Picked up in the corner by Walker. Out front. Nice pass, but Sylvester couldn't handle it. Walker. I never saw a guy that had sick hands like him. There's a puck that goes wide. Fry will hold it in at the right point. Babic will chip it ahead. Knocked down by Walker again. Bacher dumps it back in deep to Sylvester. Out front looking for Dupro. Oh, it gets away from Bacher. Good chance there. Bacher come out. Davis for Estevan at center. Down the wing. Tried to go wide here on Fry. They're holding each other up. Fry falls down. The puck is loose. Dug free here. By Barrow. Look out. Shot from a sharp angle. Good save again. Carmen Laser Hill. We say hello to some other folks out there tonight. Only Volmstead, former Flint Farm Bomber, tuning into the peg. Rob Sheepley. Robin, we have Rob Sheffield out in Courtney, B.C. tonight. Stewie Lloyd listing out in Mexico. We got uh, Melody Big Eyes Johnson Medicine Hat tonight. And Don Kirkham listing in Oliver, B.C. So, and great Clint, ex Clinton Bomber and uh, Johnny Duke's all time favorite bomber, Dustin Ernst, uh, just texted me. And they're, uh, they're watching. He and his sons, I know. No doubt, hoping for a. Big Bomber victory here today. Ernie, I think, played five years with the Bombers. Wow. assistant coach for a while, too. Tanchuk to center. Put the across the Estevan line. He'll carry it in deep. Here comes Tanchuk. In front. Oh, nice pass on the tape again. And Mercer can't do much. But there's been some good passes tonight. But for whatever reason, the Bombers just having a just tough time handling them. No puck luck. You just see, as I said, the puck seems to be bouncing. And it's funny how that goes. <laughs> Face off back in the ruined zone. Just underway in the second period. 50-50, almost at 20 grand already. Holy cow. Bombers win the face off. This is Bond or Tromley. Quick shot. Turned away by Hurdlicka. Tromley again in the corner. Picked up here by Mercer. Trying to get free. He had a good opening period. Puck scores free. Here's King. From the blue line, racing up to Brock. That is Kalora. And the puck will bounce in the Flint Fawn zone. This is Kane. Feeding it back to Tanchik at center. He'll hammer that one in deep. Trombley in pursuit. Knocked away. Kane can't pick it up, but King does. Held it in for a brief time. Now three Bruins away to center. Pangira ahead to Little. Little will get the puck back in deep. Puck grabbed here by King. We got another penalty coming up here. Mike slipped to Esteban this time. Here comes King. Delayed penalty. No one's got to get off. Lent it down yeah. the right side. Shot right on. Big rebound kicked off by Hernlicka. And Philly will pick it up. Bull was tied up back in the play with Little. Suddenly coming up here in the Bruins, the Bombers going to get an early power play here in the second period. This is big. This is really big. The Bombers killed the Esteban power play. Now they'll get a chance. 
Keegan Little held up Noah Hull, so he goes in. And boy, what a difference this power play will look like now. Sylvestri, Bockler, Duperow, Trombley, and Richmond. All the firepower is out there. Yeah, absolutely. We haven't been able to see much of this lately. Bombers with the face off. The fans can sense it as Bockler dumps it in. Trombley trying to work out front. Boy, great save again. Cat Hurtlicka gets the blocker on it. Here's Richmond at the blue line. Along the board to Bockler. Nice crisp pass up front to Duperow. To let Sylvester take it. Trying to come back to Dupro. Intercepted that time by Miley. Down the ice it goes. Richmond will pick it up. Back of the net. A minute 38 to go in the power play. Swings the pass to Dupro. 18 power play goals the regular season. Led the league. Here he comes. Bounce it off the wall. Dupro up front. Dixie. Rebound. Heard the come here. He's there to steal one on Bockler. And this guy's unconscious again. I think you mentioned Mike Palmett here. Uh, like exactly what we saw there the uh out of position but then all of a sudden he's there boy oh boy that was wide open cam hurt look up gigantic save on jacob bockler boy i don't know what's going to take me in a puck costume here tonight bombers win the face off again bockler works it back to blue line this is richmond he'll hang on two pro Throws it in deep. Wilson picked it up. Have it around the board. Bockler waits for it. Knocked it down. Back to blue line to uh, Richmond. Top of the circle for Dupro. Can't shoot. He's covered. Dupro hangs on to it. Looks for a layback. To Richmond, a quick shot. Walked to the side of the net by Sylvester. Can't tap it in. Back out front to Dupro. Dupro's got it. Slides it across. Bockler. Richmond through his legs. And it goes back to the bomber side of center. Bruins want to get some fresh penalty killers out there. 56 seconds to go in the power play. Here's the lead pass. Bockler across the blue line. Throws it back out tight for Dupero. Dupero can't knock it down. Picked up here. Or Whittingham trying to pin it up, but it's done free by Silvestri. Off the board, back out front to Richmond. In the corner for Silvestri, back out front. Trombley a chance. Weak shot. I don't think it made it through to her. Look at Trombley after it, but the Bruins, nice job here. The penalty killed her. Knock it away. Trombley again. Trombley out front. Nice pass off a skate. And Davis almost put it into his own net. Boy, Trombley a couple nifty moves, but... Having a hard time finishing so far tonight, Mike Slips. They are, but they're putting a lot of pressure. It's a good power play, but boy, oh boy, the either uh, either the defense is there to knock it away, or of course the great Cam Hurtica is uh, is stopping them. 28 seconds remaining in the power play. 16:41 to go in the second period. Still scoreless, and the Bombers having a tough time getting the offense going again tonight. Mercer, Von Strucken, and Kane up front. It's Hool. And King on the back end. The Bruins knock it down the ice. Laser Hume going to come out of his own net. Leaves it back of the goal for King. 18 seconds to go. Play to the head. Grab by Kane. He'll flip the puck back inside the Bruin line. Heard look out of the net. Bombers trying to knock it down, but puck is picked up. Sets the length of the ice again. Bomber fans trying to get into the game. Four seconds to go in the power play. That's going to do it. Both teams 0 for 1 here tonight. Goal's tough to come by. Hole a nice pass. Here's Kane. In full flight. That'll redirect off Babbick over the glass and out of play. Manitoba Junior Hockey League uh, playoff action tonight. OCN Vernon even at one after one. It's the Stan Peters trailing Dolphin 3 2 in the second. Portage up on Neverville 2 1 after one. And no score in the opening period. Stand back with Like we said, the only series the FJHL still going. And as all the other three have wrapped up. And this big face off once again in the Bruins zone. The right of Hurtlicka. Richard. Valenshin. And it looks like Mueller up front for Flintwan, King, and Tanchik on the back end. Bruins killing the early Flintwan power play. Here's King shot. Knocked down in front that time by Babbitt. Bridger races over there. He gets it. Back of the goal. Bridger gets a return pass. Knocks it away. Gets it to Glenshin. Glenshin hangs on. There's a shot. Get down to the glove. Rebound. Can't jab it in. Mueller a couple whacks at it. Miley comes over and takes a swing at him. And this is really looking like game five. You see Hurtlicka still looking around, but it just always seems to hit a body yeah, part. Yeah, he, he looked good. And again, Brock Mueller right where he should be on top of him and making it hard for him. But he's still there to make the save. Coach Sertanic wearing the hat again tonight. I guess the good luck wore off in game six uh, without the hat. Yeah, these guys are so superstitious. Oh, yeah. Face off inside the Esteban zone. The Bombers win the draw. Corey King's long shot. Glenshin looking for the redirection out front off his uh, ankle. Puck will roll back of the Bruin net. The Bombers after it again. King knocked it down in the corner. This is Galenshin in the corner. Try to work it back up front. Gets left, lost his stick. Galenshin's got it. 
Looking for a lane. He hangs on. Now he shoots it. That bounces in front of the net. I think it might have hit Runky. Again, I'm not sure if it hit Hurtlicka or not. Galenshin on the rebound. Back of the goal. Knocked to the ice. Mueller looking for the puck. Mueller back of the goal. This is Galenshin. Nobody in front of the net. He'll hang on to it. To the blue line. It goes. Tags took a quick chance. Kicked out that time. Hurtlicka loose puck grabbed again by Galenshin. Galenshin will hang on. His shot gets blocked. King holds it in. Bouncing puck deflects to the side of the net. Estevan having a tough time getting it out. Guy will get a hold of it. And he does lift it off the board. Back down inside the flint Flon zone. Tanchuk got a piece of it. Stimmy took it from him. Caught by Davis. He'll back it off the board. Back inside the flint Flon zone. Tanchuk back of his own net. Throws that over to King. Forrest is in there. Stick lifted. Good play, Joey Lees. Headman's that one to Pierce. Stimmy will pick it up. Here comes Stimmy flying down the lane. Deep inside the Bruins zone. Wilson forked in in the corner. Billion. Bumped here by Fry. Puck once again deep in the Bruins zone. It's bouncing. Flintfon trying to get it free. Fry along the board. Trying to knock it down. Pinned up along the board. The Bomber faithful. Getting the goal. Bomber goes. Shant going. Pierce throws it back in deep for Lee. Spins up front. Pierce off the goal post. Off the post. Pierce that close to getting his first ever SJHL playoff goal. Oh, what a shot that was by Pierce. And it goes off the iron. Here comes Forrest. Back to the bomber, blue line, Vaughn Sprecken will knock it down. Fry played that ahead to Wachler. Wachler lost the handle. Puck will hit a stick over the glass and out of play. What a chance by Ryland Pierce. Bombers have been all over the Estevan Bruins this year. It's 23 to 11 shots are off uh, on the game. Uh, 11 to 1 this year. Does that sound right? Yeah, because so. all, all the plays were down in Estevan. Yeah, absolutely oh. has. Bombers, even without the power play, have had a, a lot of pressure. Little Wachler outside the bomber line. Silvestri trying to get going. Miley tapped it away from him. This is Hool on his side of center. Back over to Dupro. Babbitt knocked it away, but picked off by Wachler at center. Wachler will drop it back inside the zone to Richmond. He's being watched here by Pandura. Over to Dupro. Dupro will pick it up. Blasts it in. It goes back of the Estevan net. Miley is there. Hit hard. Wachler went charging in on him, trying to get that loose puck. Here's Silvestri. Back of that. Miley takes it from him. Up the boards to Kalora. Kalora throws that back to Pandera. Pandera back across the bomber line. Knocked to the ice that time by Hool. Pandera gets up but still gets a hold of it. Here's Dupero. Outside the zone. Little knocked it down. Almost got it back in. Made a good play there. Hool will get it back. He'll flip it back down the ice. Hurt look of the save. Picked up back of the goal this time by Babbitt. This is Miley. Had to get rid of it. Bounced it off the boards. Picked off by Hool. Had to wait for Mercer to get back on side. He'll dump it in. Miley waited for it. 12.46 to go in the second period. It is a scoreless hockey game. Keegan Little to center. Fights off a check across the bomber line. Weak shot grabbed here at Laser Hume. More shout outs coming up here tonight. Big shout out to Michelle and Melanie Cabranson and family in VA. Former Flint Flon residents. Matter of fact, they went to school with Michelle. I remember her vividly. Also, uh, Shout out to Clark Stork, the, S- the uh, Nippelin play-by-play man. I think Nippelin's going to have a really, really good club next year. Anyway, big hello yes. to Clark. Does a great job covering the Hawks and the SJHL. Ooh. Chance uh, right off the face off here for Runkies. He'll fire that on target. Save made again by Harmon Laser. 24-13, the Eddie's Family Food shot clock. In favor of football, a big face off inside their own zone. And left of the goaltender, Harmon Laser. Hume. Game 7 here at the Whitney Forum tonight. Electric between these two historic rivals. Again, all kinds of big matchups in the Western Canadian Hockey League back in the 60s and 70s. And right off the face, soft that will hit a second goal to play as well. Yeah, they uh, estimated a little pressure here. Uh, Harmon Laser had Hume had to make a really nice save off a tough angle. but uh, And it'll roll to him again. This is the type of game that Estevan wants to play, though, yeah. Mike. They don't want the three wheelings now. They want it to be choppy and slow. That's right. When Juan's seen enough, they're going to change up the lines and try and get something going with Walker, Dupero, and Silvestri. They're right back out there again. And the face off once again deep inside the foot farm zone. The left of the goaltender, Harmon Laser Hume. Off the draw. This is Corey King. Got a little bit of room. He'll take it. Swings to the pass. It hits a skate. King then fanned on it. 
Up a roll back to Bruin Blue Line. That's picked up here by Guy. Took a good hit. Flip one, try to move it ahead. Puck bounces. Picked up by Rumpke outside the Bruin Line. He'll dump it back in the get slot. Walker with the interception. He'll fire it back in. And Guy will try to get it to settle down back of the Estevan net. Guy is forced here. He'll bring it outside the zone. Good job by him to get it to center up the left wing. Broken up by King. King for Flynn Flan. Tried to come back the other way to Walker. Couldn't pick up the pass. A nice thing called against Flint Flan. 11.49 to go. Second period. Face off coming back inside the Flint Flan zone. Yeah, uh, again, the uh, Bombers uh, out shooting the, uh, the, the Estevan Bruins 11 3, but uh, last little bit, the Estevan has, has done a nice job of blocking the center of the ice here. They're not letting them get out, no. Trombley no. out there, he'll try to get something going as so he'll take the face off here against Forrest. Bruins win the draw. Back to Miley. Miley along the wall will carry it in. Look out. Here he goes. Wrap around the tent. Just rolled away from it the last second. Took advantage of the room that they gave him. Now the puck will poke back to the bomber net. Grabbed here by King. This is Trombley. Can't get out. Puck bounces in front of the bomber net. Grabbed this time by Tanchuk. He's got it. He'll take off. Tanchuk to center. Long shot. Rips that one wide. Trombley on the north step. A chance from a sharp angle. It hurt the cup. And in perfect positioning to make that save. Von Strecken knocked it down. He'll take off across the line. He'll hammer that on target. Erlicka got the blocker on that. Loose puck picked up here by Trombley. The puck will stay in. Better back to Von Strecken. Bouncing puck goes wide. Kane looking for it. Right dashing in for it as well. Puck back to the net. This is Kane. Kane. Side of the net this time for Mercer. Won't shoot. Now he lets her rip. That one hit Trombley. Mercer gets it back. He'll hang on to it. This is Mercer. Through traffic shot again off the stick and wide. There's Mercer. Shoots it. That redirects by Trombley. Goes wide. He wants off. The Bruins have it. They skate up the ice with it led by Forrest at center. Forrest will dump the puck back in. Von Strecken stops that. At the midway point of the hockey game already, if you can believe it. Here's the pass. Mueller tied up. Can't get to it. They're going to wave off the ice. Wilson goes back. Back of the Estevan net for Kalora. He'll pick it up and start to skate away. Kalora to center. Down the wing, across the bomber line. Hangs on a shot! Laser Hume will turn that to the corner. Loose puck is in the corner. Kalora, legal, uh, Little both on top of that. And Flin Flon trying to work it free. They do. Poole's got a hold to his guy. Richmond around the boards to Bridger. Can't get a stick on it. Held in. Nice job that time by Wilson. The luncheon. Gets away from traffic. He'll shovel that off the board, but knocked out by Wilson. A long shot again goes wide. Mueller trying to chip it out. Had Bridger alone if he could have got it to him. Bruins good for checking. They keep it back in again. They've come to play here tonight in game seven. This is Little in the corner. Pujo loses a glove doing everything he can to try and take him off the puck. He just won't quit. What an effort by Little. Gets knocked to the boards here. But Paul will finally get the puck out. And it will chase Guy, the defenseman, back in his own zone. Who will fight the uh, battle a little in behind the play. Meanwhile, Estevan dumps it back in. Icing waved off once again. Noah Hull looking pretty tired. He'll pick yeah. it up. Swings the pass. That's chipped in by Lees. Poole goes off for a change. Pierce had that chance moments ago. He's back out there. A goal post for him. Back of the Bruin net. Guy will lift it off the boards. Gets past King. Two on one. Look out. Runky down the wing. Runky shoots, he scores! Runky gets it tight off the bar and in. And the Estevan Bruins strike first. Mike Slip, he just kind of had a sense it was coming. Yeah, what a shot by Cade Runky there. That was a rocket. Really nice it goal. Was, yeah. The Estevan Bruins will silence the crowd, I'm sure, with that one. Runky was actually pretty quiet in the series. Yes. Gets his uh, He did a nice job of looking uh, uh, Laser Hume off and... Just put it upstairs. Just a second for Runke. He was their only player in the top 20 in league scoring this year, but a big goal there. And Esteban has taken the one to nothing lead with nine minutes to go in this second period. Unassisted goal for him. And Flintpon's got to go back to work. Tanchuk will flip it in on goal. Save made here by Hurtlicka. He'll hang on. The shots are 13-5 for Flintpon, but again, a lot of long shots. Media timeout will take a break. 8.49 to go. Bruins on the board. A 1-0 lead here in Game 7 on 102.9 CFAR and ClintFlawnOnline.com. Claire. Claire Homes knows that you want your home to be just All right, sir. your own. They're ready to move homes and on-site builds are customized so that you get exactly what you want. 
Bailey Homes prides themselves on the quality of the build and providing you with every aspect of their expertise. With years of experience building and moving homes to the north, let Bailey Homes make your dream home a reality. Call toll free 1-855-773-0217 or visit bailey-homes.ca. Snow check time is here at Frontline Sport and Leisure. Custom build and design a 2024 Polaris sled exactly how you want it. With exclusive features, options, and a special warranty. Only available during snow check. Choose your color, tracks, windshield, shocks, and more. There's over a thousand combinations to choose from going on now till March 29th. To hear more about the snow Ten check seconds. Around, stop in at Frontline Sport and Leisure today or call 688-3333. Frontline Sport and Leisure. Building dreams. One slid out of time. You're on. Big goal for Cade Runke and the Estevan Ruins are up one nothing here with just under nine minutes to go in this second period. We'll see how the Bombers respond. Estevan did get the first goal in game six. Juan's Freck and Force back to his blue line. Bouncing puck. Runke's got it. Plays that one back to Babbitt. Babbitt will take a look. Swings the pass again. Scooped up at center here by Miley. He'll flip it inside Flintpond territory. Fry there to get it. Around the boards. Grabbed here by Dupereau. Off the board, looking for Silvestri. Whacked away from him, but he does get a hold of it and flips it back in. Babic is there. Babic back to that will fire it off the boards. Picked up here by Barrow. Barrow throws it inside the flint flan zone. Laser Hume can't get there to get a stick on it. Puck rolls around the board. Picked up by Silvestri. Taken away by Miley. This is Fry. Fry, nice pass. Picked up here by Vockler. Vockler. Try to nifty move, Vockler to the front of that, falls down, he's trying a penalty here. Yeah, he sure has, he went into the, that pipe hard, he's okay, he's okay. Uh, was that a tripping call there, Mike? I didn't I see think it. So. Yeah, it was. So a great chance there for the Bombers to even things up, the penalty, it's going to be a tripping penalty, and it's going to be handed out here to uh, the defenseman winning half, so... Well, the Bombers, an opportunity. I think they got to try and answer this goal as quickly as they can. Uh, uh, yeah, absolutely. Just a quick shout-out to my fellow counselor, Allison dallas Funk. Not a true hockey fan, Rob, but she, she's listening to us and enjoying the game. How could you not enjoy listening to Rob Hart? <laughs> Hopefully the Bombers can get some goals here. Mercer in the corner. Went fun of the power play. They need a goal. This is Noah Hull. Back to Vaughn. Strecken had the stick talk. Flips that through, knocked down midair. Great play by Keegan Little again. Boy, these Bruins, they've played a picture-perfect game so far. i got to hand it to them. They're making it really tough here tonight. King will take the pass. He'll take off. King across the line. Back up. But Mercer scores! Power play goal! Ethan Mercer evens it. And the Bombers do exactly what they have to do here. And they've tied the hockey game. we got a Bomber down on the ice here. I'm not sure what happened, but what a shot by Ethan Mercer. Yeah. He's had great game after great game, and that's a big goal to get this crowd back in the game here, Mike Slap. Absolutely. Huge goal. Huge goal. Um, I don't know who that is. Who is that? That's Noah Hull. Noah Hull. It looks like he, uh, he went in. He slipped into the boards there, Rob. I, I think he's okay. Might might uh, hit his nose or something, but... Uh, that's Ethan Mercer first the playoffs. That's going to come at the 12-28 mark. And that bomber power play, we said they get opportunities that could make things very interesting. They do that. Big goal there by Mercer. That's 1-1 with 7.5 to go in the second period. Really timely goal. They needed that. Galenshin against Forrest. And we're back to even, even hockey here. That's Mercer, or Mueller rather, firing that one back in. Buck will come up, Tantra can't knock it down. Tantra will poke it ahead. Miley there to get it. Von Sprecken will get an assist. And the other big bomber, bomber D-man, Corey King. So Mercer from Von Sprecken and King. They're saying that that's his third of the playoffs here. Mercer. They're right, it is. Boy, sneaky. See, he got those goals at the beginning of the series. And it, 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 I'll tell you what, this doesn't seem like a week-long series. It seems like a month-long yeah, series. Yeah, it sure does. Jeez. My apologies. His third of the playoffs. Go ahead, Mike. Yeah, no, you're right, Rob. It, these, these playoffs suck the life out of me. I, 
It does seem like it's been going on forever. I didn't even know what day it was today. No. And I'm not making that up. I didn't. I didn't sleep last night at all. Pierce will chip it in. Flint Fonts tied the game. It's 1-1. Seven minutes to go in the current. And here come the Bomber fans. Here come the Bruins. Philly in the center. Across the line. He'll hang on. Throws it back out front to Molly. Stop. Oh, big save there by Lazy Hilner. Give it has to have too much room to shoot the puck, though. Here's King back the other way. He'll force it out. Corey King to center. Nice effort to shovel it in. Fans won another penalty. What a great and job. And if it's the regular season, they might have gone. Yeah, he, they would have. What a great job by Corey King to get that puck. And he, got, he waited till he fell across the red line to get it in and uh, to negate the icing. 28-15 is the shots in favor of football on the Eddie's Family Food shot clock, but it's 1-1. Big goal, though, by Ethan Mercer, third of the postseason. Won a national championship with the Brooks Bandits last year. That's right, yeah. And if you play for the Brooks Bandits, you're a good hockey player. Yeah, you, no kidding. They could probably have two teams with all the guys they cut it. Yeah, the yeah. Bombers have the puck back of the Bruin net, looking to uh, try and take the lead for the first time. This is Jacob Wachler. The sweet hands, like we said, Wachler. Knocked down, little took him to the ice. The Bruins have it. This is Pangera. We mentioned how dangerous he is. They better keep an eye on him. He's had some big nights in this building. Kalora bounces back to point to Getzlaff. There's a shot back that clock by Dupro. The Bombers start to come to life. Dupro, though, can't get the puck free. Oh. Like hit a partition. Two on one again. Pangera down the wing. Pangera shoots. Save made. Laser Hill. Big save by Arden Laser Hill. Bombers start to try and take some chances, and they've been caught with the puck up. That's two or three odd man rushes here by the Bruins in the last minute or so. I think the Bombers have played a great period, but you're right, Rob. The one thing they're having a hard time is is getting the puck out of the zone. They, they, uh, it, 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 they're getting stopped a lot, and uh, boy, oh, boy, that's what caused that one there. 1-1's one, the score. This is Vaughn Strecken for Flint Vaughn. He's got an assist here on the opening goal, but he can't clear Barrow a quick chance. And Laser Hill again will reach out and grab that as the Bruins are winning some good battles along the boards here tonight, boy. Yeah. The Whitney Forms starting to get loud again. Excuse me, Harmon Laser Hume doing what he needs to do, though. He certainly is. Joey, or sorry, Jeremy Trombley will take the face off against Runke. Runke's got the Bruin goal here in the second period. Face off so huge, too. Vaughn Sprecken around the boards, picked up by King. That's going to redirect off a of Bruin and go out of play. NHL scores tonight. I'm glad you asked. I'm glad we got them. Nashville ahead of Boston, one nothing in the third. Montreal, Philly, 1-1 in the third. We got uh, Vancouver, St. Louis, 2-2 in the third period. Tampa Bay, a 2-0 lead on Carolina in the third. Rangers lead Columbus, 4-2 in the third. And Detroit, Pittsburgh, 3-3 in the third period. 1-1 is the score here. Runke will knock that one down. Pinned up along the ball. Mercer, who's got the goal, can't get to it, but puck is third down the ice. And it's Estevan that fired it down there, so no icing here. It's heard like a look out. I thought he's going to clear the glass. It stays in play. Runke will grab it center. Back to Davis. Davis flying across the bomber line. Davis drops it back. It'll come out. And grabs it center ice here by Whittingham. He'll send it back in. Noah Hool. Logging a lot of minutes, tripped up back of the goal. Again, Flint Vaughn wanting a penalty. Big hit there. Galencia comes over and drills his guy. Meanwhile, the puck is put back at center, picked up by Guy, and he'll send it back in. We're down to just five minutes to go in the period. And the Bombers having a hard time getting going since they scored that goal. They've been pinned back in their own zone a lot. Kane bumped off the play. Poole tried to get on it. Puck loose inside the Flint Vaughn zone. That's the big guy, Barrow, pinned up. Puck, I think, on the back of the net now. And they'll blow that down. So Estevan's really tightened up again after the goal. Their, their forecheck has been ferocious in this game. Uh, absolutely, Rob. Uh, they, they, uh, but so is the Bombers. Uh, but, but right at this point of the game, the Estevan Bruins are really, uh, really taking it to them. Boy, oh, boy, that 50-50 just went over 23,000, Rob. Somebody going to leave the rink happy. Kane will take the face off here against Little. Off the draw. Once again, Flint Fun Force deep. Fry goes down. Big body check again, Estevan. A lot more physical tonight, too, than they were back in game six. They look like a totally different hockey team here tonight. Mueller. He'll tap it down the ice. That should be an icy call. No, it's going to roll in on net. Her look going to be forced to make the save. And now the Bombers are going to face off back inside the Estevan zone. 15 8. The shots in favor of Flint Fun 28 18 in the game. On the Eddie's Family Food shot clock, but it's a 1 1 game. Runke has got his second. He scored that at 10.58. That was an odd man rush as he got free down the left side. 
And Ethan Mercer, a beautiful power play goal down the right side over top of the right shoulder of Cam Herdlicka. And correct me if I'm wrong, that's the exact same spot that Noah Hull scored in game yes. number five. Yes, it is. This is Kalora. Back across the line, knocked down. Pandera! Pandera walks in, shoots it, drills out over top of the net. Estevan comes close again. Miller tries to chase it down. Wilson is back to break this up. Goes it back to Pandera at center. He gets rid of it. But Bunnell chip it back in. Bounces away from Wilson. Winningham will go back to get it, and Pierce is out to get him. Pierce hit that goal post earlier in the period as well. He's been very good for football in the past couple of games. We're glad to have him back in uniform as well. Flora sidesteps his check. Over to Pangira. Pangira hit hard, but still gets the, the pass to Kalora. They'll feed it back to Guy. Guy throws that one back over to uh, Miley. Spins! Fires it! Hard shot! And Mueller will get a hold of it. He'll tap it back down the ice. And Sunflaw trying to get going offensively. An icing call. A little bit premature there, I, I think. I don't think that was should have been called icing. Uh, the Bombers have to tighten up here. They're, uh, they're, they're not. They're, they're, getting, uh, they're getting beat. They're getting beat bucks. right now for sure. Bruins coming on, 3.35 to go in the second period, a 1-1 game. And Esteban, we talked about it going in, anything but a sixth-place team, and boy, they are really riding Funfon hard. They want this one bad tonight. I know Funfon hoping to feed off the crowd, but you still got to do a lot of things within the game, and Esteban right now uh, looking like a very, very determined club. Funfon needs to get rolling. What big goal, next goal again. We talked about the first goal tonight. Whew. How about the next one? Yeah. Here's Pierce. Inside his own zone, intercepted, fired back in that time by Barrow. This is King. Davis will force him back of the net. King will hang on to it. He'll take a look. He's in no rush. If nobody comes after him, he'll set it up the way he wants. Ahead to Silvestri. Gives it to Stibby. Stibby down the wing. Falls down, but gets it in deep. Here's Pierce. Follows it in. There's a quick shot. And Erlika will reach down and grab that. 2.55 to go in the second period. A couple more shout-outs to throw out here tonight. Big hello going out to uh, Carter Love, or Carter Lowe, pardon me, uh, listing uh, somewhere in Saskatchewan. I can't Ger- read my writing. I apologize. Did you hear it? Ger- uh, Gerald. Gerald Saskatchewan, 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 I believe. Because I'm glad you're paying attention. <laughs> Face off back inside the Bruins zone. Do you have any idea where that is? No. Here's oh. Keegan Little at center. Across the bomber line looking for Kalori. Had to go to the front of the net there. The puck will go to the side of the bomber net and grabbed here by Harmon Laser Hill. Nice job by Corey King there to, to tie him up and uh, let L- Laser Hume get to the puck. Boy, what a battle we have again here tonight. The first 10, 12 minutes, Mike went by so quickly. And the last five or six, he knows all the whistles and how it's tightened yeah, up and yeah. really slowed things down. It sure has. Bombers well, just hanging on, though. They got to. They yeah, gotta this hasn't out. been a good period for them, really. They do have the goal, though. So Vestry taking the face off against Little. Bombers win the draw. Bockler along the boards, kicks it ahead. Dupro trying to get going. They've really contained. Dupro going to get a penalty here. Gets the stick up high on Whittingham. And now Estevan will get their second power play. This might be a four-minute penalty. Two. No, it's just two. Okay. But you know, Rob, that we talk about it all the time. You, the uh, Esteban feet are moving, the Bombers aren't, and that's what happens. He's going to take that penalty. Big power play chance here for the Bruins to retake the lead. They're 0 for 1 the power play, but had a brilliant, some really good chances. And they've had flip Plum kind of back on their heels uh, for the last several minutes. So, boy, could be the turning point of the hockey game here. Mike Slips as Davis will line up for the faceoff here. Bruins hold it in. This is Miley. Miley. Side of the goal for Runke. Back to Miley. To Babic. Babic. Long shot. Didn't miss by much. Runke will knock it down and hang on. Ten power play goals for him in the regular season. Runke the table setter. Back to Miley again at the blue line. Miley hangs on. Still hanging on to it. Now he shoots it. Saved. They put something behind him. And Richmond might have saved the goal. Picked up by Kane off the glass. Back inside the Esteban zone, Miley is there. Richmond cleared that puck as a dribble behind Harmon Laser Hume. Here's Babic inside his own zone. Babic will swing it again to Davis. The big story of game five runs the linesman over. Puck set back down the ice. A minute 11 to go in the power play. 1.45 to go in the second period. A 1-1 game here at the Whitney Forum tonight. Oh, what a game seven it's been. Babic back to Miley. To Candles across the bomber line. This is Davis down the wing. Whipped on that one, but he'll keep the puck with him. 
Davis hangs on. Dropped it in the corner for Pangura. Back to Miley at the blue line. Just holds it in. Off the boards for Pangura. Pangura back in the net. Knocked away by King on the stick that time to Mercer. Mercer got it. Trying to get away from Little. Hitting off hard along the boards. Winfong trying to work it free. Meanwhile, the seconds count down. 35 seconds to go in the power play. Big log jab. Esteban does move it free. This is Kalora. Back to Babic. Babic. Kalora! Into the glove. Good save. Laser Hill slides across. That was a tough one. And Pangara and King really going at it there at the side of the net. Yeah. Pangara actually looked over the referee, thought that he might have taken a bit of a slash there, but that was a tough one. It was a knuckler, uh, and uh, Laser Hume had to track it through Pangara and King and whoever else was standing out in front there. 26 seconds remaining in the Estevan power play. One minute to go in the second period. Little and Silvestri face off to the left of Harmon Laser Hume in this 1-1 game. Wentfon wins the face off. This is Jacob Bockler. Down the ice it goes. Redlick will wait for it. They'll leave it back to the net. Picked up again this time by Whittingham. 13 seconds to go in the power play. Whittingham. That is blue line. To Wilson. Chipped it in along the glass. Bockler races after it. Leans into it. Gets it out as it goes off the stick that time of Little. Almost a shorthanded break there for Silvestri. Penalty over. Wentfon kills the power play. Estevan 0 for 2. They got the puck still at center, though. Keegan Little again. What a game he's had. Down the boards. Still has it. Throws it back out front. Barrel couldn't get a shot away. Here's Bockler. Listen ahead to Dupro. 20 seconds to go. Dupro onside. Silvestri! And that hits the skate and goes to the corner. Bockler tried to follow that one up. Just 11 seconds to go. Bruins will clear the puck to their blue line. It's grabbed here at center ice by Wilson. He'll flip it back in football territory. Laser Huma play it around the boards to Dupro. That's going to do it here for the second period tonight. And the team's trade goals, but just like after one, all even Steven coming back for the third. Nobody can say they're not getting their money's worth in game seven. I tell you, if you're not here, you've made a mistake. Uh, the, uh, it's so exciting, and uh, the crowd's gotten into it this period, and uh, Bombers just got to get a little stronger on the puck uh, and, and keep skating. Uh, but uh, a great period by the Estevan Bruins, and I thought the Bruins Bombers played a decent period, too. Well, it's pretty even here so far in game number seven. It looks like they're going to battle it right down to the complete wire. Not only do these two teams get it to game seven, Mike, but it looks like one goal probably going to be the difference here tonight. That's the way it's gone, hasn't it, Rob? Well, that's the way that it's indicated this one so far tonight. Yep. We'll take a break. Second intermission show coming right up from a very boisterous and loud Whitney Forum. Once again, you're listing the Creighton Furniture Flint Vaughn Bomber Playoff Hockey here on 102.9 CFAR and FlintVaughnOnline.com. Clear. And Chicken Chef. From 7 until close, every Tuesday night, you can enjoy Chip. their famous chef burger for $2 when you purchase an on-tap draft. Plus, Wild Wing Wednesdays every Wednesday night from 7 till close. Order a grown-up beverage and receive an order of Jumbo Chef Wings for free. Specials Tuesdays and Wednesdays, but at Chicken Chef for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, it always feels like home. Dine-in or take-out at Chicken Chef, proud sponsors of this Bomber broadcast. Northland Ford proudly supports the Flint Fawn Bombers in the SPHL playoffs, and we know they'll play tough like the Ford F-150, the toughest truck on the market 45 years running. Northland Ford helps the community cheer on the Bombers as they fight to bring a championship home where it belongs and will provide you with the best selection on the lot to choose from in the North for the North, Northland Ford. Your home is important to you. It's where you feel comfortable, which is why when the snow falls and the wind gusts, you need to stay protected. With Jim's Custom Doors and Windows, from the installation of new windows and doors to the replacement of old leaky ones, their technicians can provide. And by installing proper airtight seals and harsh weather-proof products, Ten seconds. you can keep your home protected while reducing your energy bill by up to 25%. Call Jim's Custom Doors and Windows today, 687-7071. You're on. All right, welcome back to Whitney Forum. Uh, quickly, before we run to our uh, big interview with Gardner McDougall, the uh, two goals in the second period. Runke, the Bruin captain, his second unassisted, picked up a puck in the neutral zone, went in down the link, barred it uh, right off the bar, and in beautiful goal for him, his second of the, of the uh, playoffs. That came at the 10.58 mark. The Bombers, we know they live and die by their power play. They get a chance. 
Ethan Mercer, beautiful bullet just underneath the bar, the only puck to beat. Cab Hurtlicka so far tonight. Von Spreck and Kenny assist at 12.38. Shot 17-10 in favor of Flint Vaughn. It's 30-20 to 20 in the Bombers' favor after 40 minutes of play. Estevan 0 for 2 with the extra attacker. Flint Vaughn 1 for 2. When the uh, teams are tied up after two periods of play, we have got the Estevan Bruins. Actually, this is a weird stat. This is the first game that's been tied after 40 minutes of play in the series. Wow, that is that is a weird stat. Didn't know that. We'll take a break. One-time Bomber assistant coach Gardner McDougall, now the head man at the University of New Brunswick, fresh off another national championship, joins us next. The Bomber Legend Series continues. 102.9 CFAR football and online.com. Clear. Pizza apologizes for being closed today. And uh, just shout out to Crazy Crabs and Snow Lake if you can. Again, Creighton's Pizza closed today, but back open tomorrow. And that's when you can call 688-2080 and fight for the last slice. Good evening. Welcome to our second intermission. And once again, uh, we're uh, going to be doing our Flint Bomb Bomber Legend Series. Going to be joined by a former Flint Bomb Bomber assistant coach and, of course, a guy that's a synonymous with hockey here in northern Manitoba and Saskatchewan. Gardner McDougall joining us from the Maritimes, fresh off another national university championship. Gardner, congratulations again on, on the great work that you continue to do, and an absolute pleasure to have you on our Flint Bomb Bomber broadcast here tonight. Uh, always a pleasure, Rob, and uh, yeah, no, uh, and a great times up in the northern Manitoba in the Flint Bomb area there, so it's always a pleasure to uh, reconnect with people up that way. Yeah, you started in Cranberry Point. I mean, you had the good high school program eventually, an assistant coach with Flin Flon. Uh, you coached Labrette, and then, of course, you were the very first coach in the history of the OCN Blizzard. So uh, I know that you've had a lot of success on the national level with university. I won Memorial Cup. We'll talk a little bit about that. But I know that you look fondly of Manitoba. I guess it kind of molded you to who you are today. Yeah, uh, no question. It's a great foundation. And I got to, you know, I got to thank a guy, Dan Reagan. Uh, Reagan, uh, that got it all started. <laughs> I think he hired me five different times. And, uh, Actually had a two-month stint as the director of operations in, in the year 2000 in Flin Flon with Larry there, when they're putting the team together for the Royal Bank Cup up in Flin Flon, and uh, uh, it started a two months there, and then ended up getting the job at UNB that uh, uh, I guess that summer. And you've been at UNB ever since, and uh, fresh off another big national championship. Gardner, uh, why have you had? I mean, you've had a lot of success everywhere, but in particular, the secret to your success at the university level. What well, what, what, what's been the key ingredients for you? Yeah, I think, you know, the biggest thing is the people. And uh, we're so fortunate. We, we get outstanding players, you know, from across the country. And, uh, you know, they buy into the, you know, the culture and the program here. I have a tremendous coaching staff with me. And uh, we've got some longevity together as a coaching staff. Uh, Rob Henniker, I had him as a player for four years. He was their MVP for four years. He signed an NHL contract at a UNB. Uh, was a tremendous player. He was the best player in the country, best athlete in the country when he left out of 11,000 athletes. And uh, as good a player as he was, he's even a more outstanding coach. And I'm real fortunate. He married a gal from uh, Fredericton here. He's got two young kids. And uh, he's been with us eight years. Brad Good's been with me nine years. Uh, Charlie Cameron, Dave Cameron's brother, has been with us eight years. I have a full-time goalie coach, uh, two fitness coaches. And uh, we had a couple of sports psychologists, but one guy's in Tampa now, and the other guy uh, was with Maple Leaf. So we lost those guys. But uh, no, we have a terrific staff, and the community uh, has been tremendous support. The university itself, our, our president of the university here is a former player way back in, in the 80s. And, uh, you know, so we get great support from our administration. And then, uh, you know, the people, uh, we've had the you know, number one fan support for over 20 years in a row. So it's a uh, just combination of all those factors, Rob. Well, let's face it, uh, the East Co I've never had a chance to go up to the East Coast before, Gardner, but I just hear how beautiful it is. Uh, some people tell me it's one of the most beautiful places on the planet. Yeah, they're not far wrong. You know, and I, we truly, uh, I was born in PEI, and uh, you know, we won our last national championship back in my home province, which was certainly pretty special. But uh, I spent 16 years in, in Western Canada. My wife's from uh, you know, just outside of Winnipeg in the White Shell, and both our, both our kids were born in the Paw. You know, so we have a lot of roots to Western Canada. I absolutely loved it there, you know, and uh, had a great experience as, uh, you know, uh, kind of, you know, get my foundation as a coach. But uh, the opportunity to come back here at the university level has been 
you know, in first grade as well. You know, it's tremendous. And then, you know, obviously in the summertime, uh, you know, Atlantic Canada is, you know, a place where you got to put it on your ticket list sometime and get down this way. No, no question about it. I'd love to get out there someday. Uh, let's talk about, uh, we talked about your success at national level for university. You also won a Memorial Cup. But talk about how that, because that opportunity just kind of came out of the blue there. Talk about how that all unfolded for you and the secret to you winning uh, what the, the biggest trophy in junior hockey. Yeah, it was yeah uh, exhilarating experience, I guess you would say. I you know I had, uh, had a call. I uh, had known the GM Trevor Georgie. Uh, my son uh, Taylor, who was you know uh, had his minor hockey roots in the pond. You know, played some tournaments as, as novice in Flin Flon and, and did the you know the Manitoba circuit. But he's you know been a graduate of UND here as a business and a law degree, and you know he now works as an NHL you know, certified agent, so he's got a lot of connections with a lot of these GMs, and they had first kind of mentioned maybe as a consultant to help out things, and I hadn't heard from them, and then I had got a call on a Saturday morning, and just said, listen, would you like to be our head coach, and uh, I said, well, maybe I need a day to think it over and talk to some people, and they, they said, you prefer if you let us know tonight, but uh, yeah, things happen fast, but uh, obviously it's one of those yeah, really, really special. I mean, the Memorial Cup is such a tremendous tournament. I mean, it's the biggest, biggest tournament of amateur hockey in the world. And, uh, you know, how they, how it's presented, and the coverage, the media coverage, the fan support. And last year, the four teams were all tremendous teams. You know, the representative from the Western Hockey League, uh, Edmonton Oil Kings, were as good a team as you could find. And Hamilton had a dominant team. Uh, Shawinigan was great from the, the queue. And, you know, we had our Sea Dogs at the, you know, we had the, we, you know, had been off for a long time before we played, but those guys played outstanding. So it was a tremendous tournament. Yeah, it's kind of tough to come in at the. Uh, is that uh, a unique experience for you? I mean, you've got a lot of experience. You got a lot of experience, and you've coached a lot of different levels, a lot of different leagues. Uh, that was a really a unique situation, was it not? Yeah, no question. Uh, we're lucky that like, our university cup tournament is. There's some similarities to the Memorial Cup. The Memorial Cup, you kind of do get a second chance because it's a round robin and then a playoff. Uh, and then I've been in world championships, uh, you know, the World University Games. Uh, you know, we just finished up in January, but I had two prior occasions there. And I've kind of taken university all-star teams versus the world juniors. Uh, you know, play, we played three games in Victoria, B.C. I got, I got five, six years ago. So all those experiences help you in your preparation. And, uh, you know, we had some, you know, help. Uh, the Windsor Spitfires, they, they had uh, done some work. Uh, you know, they had a... The 39-day break before they went, so uh, uh, their uh, coach was, you know, really helpful in our planning and that type of thing. Well, it's uh, it's definitely worked out well for you. Let's touch back on your roots in northern Manitoba. Like you mentioned, you started off by coaching the uh, high school program in Cranberry. Eventually, an assistant coach with the Flint Farm Bombers under the tutelage of Norm Johnson. What do you remember about those days? I mean, pretty neat. Like, you know, in, in Cranberry Forties, I, I took over from Jerry Sadomalak, uh, you know, his good buddy at Gordy Federchuk out there in, in the Cranberry. And, uh, you know, it was like a really unique experience. All of a sudden, you know, I'd be playing lots of hockey. Uh, you know, I'd been in the Norway house a couple of years, and they had, you know, really good native teams, a lot of native tournaments up there. So I was really enjoying playing, and I just kind of had an injury and I didn't know if I was going to be able to keep playing. So it kind of happened fast that as well. I remember coming back to Doug McLean's hockey school here in PEI and saying, oh, i got to learn a lot about coaching here. And Murray Hebert was a good friend of mine. He eventually came to Cranberry from Norway House as well. And Murray worked together four years in Cranberry. Murray you know, spent, uh, I think, 25, 30 years in the Ontario Hockey League. He was the uh, general manager of the Kitchener Rangers before retiring two years ago. So he did you know, a great job in the OHL, and he was a terrific assistant coach for me there. And, uh, then getting the opportunity to go to Flin Flon, um, you know, with Norm. Uh, he had been a veteran coach in the, in the Saskatchewan Junior, and uh, I guess Storm and Norman was his popular name. And uh, you know, learned uh, you know lots about the Saskatchewan Junior. I'd always, you know, came to lots of games when I had coached in Cranberry, and it was always you know a passion to to coach at that next level. So that was you know a unique experience. Uh, I was fortunate Dan Reagan made it work. I was a part-time teaching at, at Frontier Collegiate, and then I drive in for practices and made a lot of the home games, all the home games, and then, you know, the close games on the road. But it, it gave me, a, you know, again, it was another great experience, and, 
I met some great people in Flin Flon. You know, even when I go back, uh, you know, playing the midget team there, Artie O'Donnell, uh, you know, was a terrific opponent for me, and we became lifelong friends, and, and we still, you know, get together lots and uh, that type of thing. But there's lots of great hockey people in the Flin Flon area that uh, they have so much passion for hockey, and, you know, I followed Mike's progress, and Mike's come down here to UNB at different times, and I meet him at different, you know, tournaments in, it, in the spring where he's doing his recruiting, and I have such, uh, you know, sort of admiration for how, how well he's done with the Bombers, and you know, we followed him extensively last year. I was listening to your broadcast here in Fredericton, and that's, you know, big game, the seven-game series with Estadan, so it's kind of unique that they're playing the first round this year, and home game number seven's in Flin Flon here, so let's hope the Bombers prevail here tonight. I know we're going to have a great crowd. We also got to talk about your time with the OCM Blizzard. You were the first head coach in its inception. And speaking of the Estevan Bruins, I'll never forget that, and I'm sure you won't either. The 99 Anavet Cup, Bruins against the Blizzard, Gardner, the two best Junior A teams that I've ever seen. Yeah, that was, uh, you know, very... <laughs> Very few regrets. I've been really fortunate to have a lot of success in different. But if I guess if there's one, <laughs> I'd like to have one do-over. We try to, you know, win that series with Estevan, and it's a you know a grueling series. And uh, you know we've won the first two games up in OCN, and one was an overtime, and you know packed house, and the place was just yeah going crazy. And then uh, down in Estevan, two forty-five, three yeah, tough tough games, and. <laughs> I said the sixth yep. man was on the ice. I still get upset about that. But anyways, I think the game five, we lost one nothing. But uh, And it's interesting, uh, you know, three key members of the Esteban team ended up coming to UNB. And when I got the job at UNB, there, uh, you know, Calvin Watson was, you know, a really good player in Esteban there in Chicago as well, and Graham Slender. And uh, I got to coach them here three years at UNB and Calvin for four years. So they really helped my success here. But it was a tremendous, um, you know, the game six, uh, we had a lead. They came back, and uh, you know we ended up losing overtime. But it was, yeah, I remember just the passion, and uh, you know, uh, you know they have a little small spot like uh, OCM the Paws do so well, and uh, you know the, even that team. I still have a lot of admiration for all members of that team. They were, they, you know, they worked their uh, tails off, and uh, still wish that we were in the, got a chance to go to the end of the cup at that time. Yeah, no, no question. They had a, a, a tremendous program. Quickly, Gardner, before we wrap it up, there's something I've always wanted to ask you, and I haven't had the opportunity, but we're going to do it today. You've had so much success, the junior, the university level. Any aspirations to coach in the NHL? Yeah. <laughs> You're on. And we hate to cut that interview, but we're back underway here in a tight 1-1 game. Mike Slip, and I think I speak for you. We don't want to miss a goal. No, we sure don't. Not now, Rob, but boy, oh boy, great to hear. Gardner McDougal. And I will post that on our website to be able to hear it in its entirety coming up very soon. Here's Barrow. Off the boards in for Davis. Davis trying to get in there. Barrow will follow that up. He'll flip it around the boards. Miley is there. He'll chip it back in. Bockler. Back of the net. Had to be careful. Look out. He gets tackled back of the net there. I'm not sure what the heck happened. Him and Davis are really tied up though. And the Bombers will get three guys away to center. This is Dupro down the wing. Dupro hangs on. Shoots it. I think that hit Fry as he was cutting to the front of the net. Back of the goal it goes. Miley will clear it off the board. Sylvester can't knock it down. Barrow gets it out. Barrow by himself down the wing. Barrow hangs on. Beautiful toe drag. Oh, he just missed. What an effort. Oh, my goodness. He went by three guys. He's been good. Wilson will fire that one back in. Laser Hume stopped that back. That was close. Oh. Knocked down by Little in the corner. 1-1 one, one just underway in the third period. Rob Hart, Mike Slip. Boy, game seven. Boy, these teams... <laughs> It's so tight uh, the entire series, and they're going to make it a tight one in Game 7 as well here tonight as the Bombers will jump it in. Here's Kurt Lika out of his net. Around the boards for Wilson. Up the boards. But Bomb will try to keep it in. Pangura just, well, I'm not sure what happened, but he lost his footing and went down. Wilson played that one back to uh, Whittingham to center. Knocked down by Houle. Houle tapped it ahead. Wilson waits for it inside the Estevan blue line. He'll send that one back to Pangura. Puck left it in the Flint Pond zone and picked up here by Richmond back in the net. Richmond up the boards. This is uh, Mueller with some room down the right side. Can't poke it away from Guy. Puck will come back to center. Poole will slide it back to Richmond. Hammers it inside the Estevan zone. Mueller is there. Back of the goal for Galenshin. Tried to work it out front. Picked up by Guy. Hammered off the boards. Here's Fillion. Back up the middle. 
Opponent can't get going. Knocked away from him. Chaser gets off back on the Bruins side of center. Off the board. Bridget grabbed that. Trying to get it back in. Hit from behind here. Picked up. We got a penalty. Do we have a penalty coming up? No, I think it's offside. Pardon me. That could have been a call. Yeah. Yeah, as we said there. Uh, I got to put the whistles away, I guess, here. 17.45 to go third period. A big hello to Huey Quinn, former Flint Pond Bomber, out in 10 kicks at BC tonight. Now that was a goal. Was he? You win. He's the first guy that I could see could really play the puck. I think Ron Hextall took a page out of his playbook. Uh-huh. Anyway, Huey, golfing every day in Pet Ticket, he tells me. But watching the game here tonight, Von Sprecken ahead to Wachler at the Bomber Blue Line. Kenny had some room. He's going to hammer it in. Herlicka will reach up and grab that. And he quickly disposes of it. Usually he hangs on to it. He got rid of it a little bit quicker than he normally does. This is Runky, the Esteban goal score. Back of the goal here for Babic. Babic will lift that one up. Knocked down at center by Von Strucken. Tapped it ahead. And again, you can't hit the puck ahead unless you're inside the neutral zone area. Hello to Brian Benson. Uh, I, I imagine Benny was quite a hockey player to see. I, th- I, I, I think he was. I'm not going to tell you what Rob Hart just did. He shook his head, Benny, but. I, I don't know. You know what? Maybe he was. I don't know. He's a great guy. Fun to be around. Crazy Kraz, if you're wondering where he is, working in Snow Lake tonight. A big hello to him as well. I'm sure he'd like to be at this game. I mean, who wouldn't want to be? Tangara back to Wilson at the point. Shut their traffic. Save me. Puck is loose. And Laser Hill will gobble that one up. And a big, big stop there. Huge stop. A ton of traffic in front and two monsters with Tangara and Kalara right there. <laughs> Those are big, big guys. 31-21 is the shots in favor of Flintstone just underway in the third period. This big 1-1 hockey game. Holy cow, it's been tough to find room out there tonight. Little set for the face off here again against Mercer. Both teams proving they can win in each other's rank. And I know Esteban, a big lift for them in game five. They look a lot more confident here than we've seen in a lot of games between these two heads, the past, two teams the past couple of years. Here's the quick pass here to Trombley. Can he get some room? Down the wing, a hard rocket over top of the net. The puck will come back to center. Tanchuk knocks it down, feeds it back to King. He'll dump that one in. Trombley again will try to run after it. Look out, it took a funny hop. Trombley tried to wrap around. That got blocked, he gets it back to the slot. King shoots! That got blocked in front, rebound set outside the zone. And King back to pick it up at his own blue line. What a chance that was moments ago. Trombley will chip it back in again. If Trombley can get going, that'll be very good news here for the Bombers tonight. Bruins dump it in for Forrest. That's why picked off by Hull. Off the boards, Trombley again. And that'll redirect to the Bomber bench. We've got a play with 16, 17 to go. Good chance there by Corey King, but yet another shot block. Yeah, Trombley did a nice job of uh, forechecking there. He lost the puck, got it back, and I think he lost it again and got it back again. But just a tough angle for him to score on. Base off outside the Bomber blue line, Forrest and Lees. Here's Richmond. Up the middle. Puck tapped. Pierce looking for the bouncing puck. Picks it up. Shot. Puck is loose. Heard looking down. It's underneath his left pad. And this line is giving Esteban yeah. some tough times tonight. Rylan Pierce playing a great game tonight. Gets the goal post back in the second period. and looked like he was going to get close to jamming that one in as well. Will it be an unsung hero tonight, Mike Slip? It, it, uh, it would be... Uh, Justice, sweet justice if it was, because these unsung heroes uh, played so good down the stretch to get the Bombers to where they are right now. So that's great set for the face up against Little inside the Bruins zone to the right of the goaltender, Cam Hurtlicka, this 1-1 game underway in the third period here tonight. Bombers win this along the boards. Dupereau trying to keep it in, bouncing puck, so that's three a shot, and he taps that one wide. Back of the goal for Vockler. Vockler, you're back at the corner here for Silvestri. Bockler looking for room, trying to get away from Miley. Bockler hanging on to the front, falls down, puck intercepted by Pangera. Can't get it out, though. Richmond will hold it in for the time being. Bouncing puck out, comes out. Pangera after it. He's got wheels, but looks like Richmond knocked away from him again. He didn't get it cleanly. Feeds it out front. Little gets a piece, but can't knock it down cleanly. Richmond back to Silvestri. This is Silvestri. Trying to go around the beam, man. Look out, a penalty coming up here to Guy. He's... <laughs> I don't know, he's let some other stuff go on. I don't yeah. know called that. Yeah, and that's the thing. You know, that is a penalty, but he hasn't called anything. So it's hard for these players to know when uh, 
You know, that's the, that's always a complaint. But I will tell you this, Spike, whether it's a penalty or not, Guy had no chance to, but to do that because yeah. if he doesn't, the guy's gone. That's right. Absolutely right. So, I mean, if you're going to take a penalty, it might as well be to cut down a scoring chance, yeah, right? Yeah, no, no. It's, it was a, what they'd call a good penalty. Mercer against Rucky. Put one, wins the face off, tied up, a chance on the power play again. This is Hool. Inside the line, a shot off the goal post again! Two goal posts for Flint Flon tonight. Hool knocked that one down. Back up front, Mercer. The toe drive, trying to get it back to Hool. Bouncing puck, Kane hit it with a high stick. They say no. Doesn't matter. The Bruins get it to clear the length of the ice anyway. And Hool will go back to get it. A minute 38 to go on the power play. 15 minutes in the third period. 1 1. Big chance again. Von Strecken had that one knocked away. Bruins standing their guard at their blue line. Kane in the corner. Hool will pick it up. He's got it. This is Noah Hool. Swings the pass to King. Offside, Flint Flon. But King sees it, goes back to center. This is Vaughn Spreckett. Back across the line. He'll jump it in. Bouncing puck at the back of the ruined net. Picked up here by Corey King. Shovels it to the blue line. Hool is there. Back to Vaughn Spreckett. His shot over top of that. I think it hit the knob of the stick there of Vaughn Spreckett. Kane, back of the net. He'll hang on to it. Kane. Knocked away from him. Puck left at the blue line. The bull keeps it in. Nice job. 50 seconds to go in the power play. Football can't find it, though. Down the ice it goes again. 45 seconds to go in the power play. Von Sprecken will let Richmond touch it at, and pick it up back of uh, his net. Here's the pass to Wachler. Wachler, long shot. Kicked to the corner that time by Herdlicka. When Von tried to get the puck. Runky got lost it back of the net, though. Silvestri hangs on to it. Dishes it back to the point. Here's Richmond, out front. Chance for Silvestri, blocked that time by Whittingham. Oh, these players doing an excellent job, both ways blocking shots, just yeah. 21 seconds remaining in that flint Pond power play. The uh, Farmers have done a nice job of moving the puck around and keeping the puck in their zone, but boy, the puck seems to be bouncing a lot tonight, Rob. I don't know if it's just me or... You mentioned that earlier. Earlier, uh, Herbert yeah. did a little work here on his pads. Uh, Manitoba Junior Hockey League playoffs tonight. OCM, uh, good effort so far. They got Burton down 4-2 after two. The Dolphin Kings need to go in to get back in their series with Swan Valley. They're up 4-3 in the third. Portage ahead of Neverville, or sorry, it's tied now. 3-3 after two, and Stein back a 1-0 in Winkler in the second period. 1-1 here, Babbick around the boards. Richmond waits for it at the left point. He'll hold it in. This is Tremblay. Back to Richmond. The Bockler just holds it in. Now he coughs it up. Little takes it from him. Little the center. He'll hang on to it. Try to kill a few seconds. Throws it back to Barrow. Barrow shorthanded across the line. Dropped it along the boards for Miley. Power play is over. Flint Flon comes up empty. Miley back of the goal. These Esteban Bruins, boy, they're battling tooth and nail tonight. Here's Jacob Bockler. Power play didn't get much going at all. Richmond across the line. He'll throw that one in deep for Bockler. Gets a steal back of the net. Had it for a, a second, then Kalora took it back, and he'll lift it off the boards, back down inside the flint Pond zone. That'll be a nice thing called, Von Sprecken will touch up, and a big kill there for the Bruins. Sure was. The Bra Bombers had some chances, but uh, you know what? I'm noticing the Bombers are a little too cute with the puck, Rob. They're uh, feathering it. They're the Bockler there, and it's a lot of them. They're not putting a lot of oomph to their passes and uh, causing... Uh, causing uh, Interceptions by the Esteban Bruins. Boris set for the face up against Galenzi. You're right, maybe not just as uh, tentative. Yeah, that's, a, that's actually a perfect way to describe their game in, in parts tonight. Face up back inside the Bruins zone. 1 1 to score. Flint Fun takes the puck free. Nice work again! Over top of the net that time by Bridger. Boy, Bridger's winning a lot of puck battles in this game. Back of the goal, this is Mueller. Lost the handle to Miley. Miley off the glass. Gets it back down towards the Bomber blue line. Vaughn Sprecken will race back there to get it. This is Vaughn Sprecken. Back to Fry. Look out. Overskated it. Got it back to Bridger at center. Tried to head man that one, but broken up and set back inside the foot Vaughn zone. Fry is there. Off the boards. Runky knocked it down. Did he keep it in? Looks like he did. Vaughn Sprecken will get it back, though. Off the middle. He had Mueller open. He collides here with Wilson. And the puck picked up back in the Bruin net by Whittingham. Off the board, stretch pass. Pangura will get a piece of it. Puck will roll inside the Flint Fawn zone. Picked up by Tanchuk. Tanchuk back in the net. 12-0-3 remaining third period. 
The shot's in favor of Flint on the Eddie's Family Food shot clock. Pierce redirects that in the Bruins zone. Runke is there. Good move on Lees. Runke. Headmans it to Wilson. Wilson at center. Back to Runke. He calls for it. Runke! Across the line. He drills a shot just wide. Went bottle will chip it out, but Davis there to get it. Almost caught it up to Pierce. Trying to get a lane here, but Davis gets back. Here's Davis flying up the right side across the bomber line. Cody Davis back of the net. Still hangs on. In the corner for Pangara. Out front. Jet slap knocked it down. He shoots it from a sharp angle. Good save. Puck loose it from the bomber net. Bruins have it. They can't finish up. Flipped outside the zone. And Guy gets left. Both breaks back to get it. Guy will pick it up inside the blue line. Here he is to center. Guy down the wing will flip it back inside the flint one zone. Noah Hool had to be careful. He loses it. Horace took it away from him. Boy, this Bruin team, I can't believe how good they've looked here tonight. Richmond takes it away from him, plays it back to Mercer again. Mercer down the wing will dump the puck in. The bomber crowd looking for a reason to celebrate. Guy around the boards. Gets it back to center. Who will cut that one off? He'll lift it back in. Getzloff wasn't sure where it was. Played that one back to Guy. Guy up the wall. Knocked down by Noel Hool again. Can't poke it out, but... Get it out. Picked up here by uh, Kane. Puck will float back inside the Esteban zone. Babic is there. Finds it over to Little. Ten and a half minutes to go. Quick third period tonight. Babic in the corner. Flipped it back of the goal. Picked up this time by Getzlaff. Off the glass inside the flint zone. Fry is there. Back to Von Sprecken. Fry takes a look. Up the wing. Bockler chipped it back in deep. Here's Herdlicka out of his net. In the corner. Picked up by Miley. Back of the goal to Babic. Look out. Bockler got in on him. Almost coughed it up in front of his own net. Good pressure there by Jacob Bockler. Bruins work it free to Miley. Miley at center. Back across the bomber line. He'll carry it in deep. There's Von Strecken. Inside his own zone. Over to the far side here to Cole Dupro. Not a lot of room for Dupro in this hockey game. They've really contained him. Von Strecken. Falls down in the corner. has got the puck jammed up there. Meanwhile, the Bruins will try to dig it free. Von Strecken gets back up. Puck is in plain sight. Nine and a half to go in the period. It's just seconds. Continue to tick by in this 1-1 hockey game. Funfon gets a good chance to power play here in the third period, but the Bruins penalty kill didn't allow much. And finally, they're going to say somebody hit it with a hit of the glove pass. But boy, this Esteban team, these loose puck spikes slip. Uh, I haven't seen them. This, this is yeah. bad moments. But I think it's been incredible. Yeah, absolutely. Media timeout. We'll take a break. It's all even. What a game. This series going to come to an end at some point. Who knows? You're listening to Creighton Furniture Flintfawn Bomber Playoff Hockey here on 102.9 CFAR and FlintfawnOnline.com. The Clear. question of what you want to own is okay. actually the question of how you want to live your life. That's why you go to Creighton Furniture and Appliance Center, because you deserve to live right. From sofas, sectionals, mattresses, and love seats to refrigerators, dishwashers, accent pieces, cabinets, and tons more, Creighton Furniture has everything you need to make your life easier and more relaxing. Now the question is, is that how you want to live your life? I think we all know the answer. Live your life to the fullest with Creighton Furniture and Appliance Center. Open Tuesday to Saturday, 10 to 4. What are you doing with that KFC famous chicken chicken sandwich? I am unwrapping it, enjoying it, and saving the spicy one for later. No, 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 no. Take a picture of the famous chicken chicken sandwich from KFC, hashtag it, reel it, post it, boost it, make a long video, reaction video, tutorial video. Nah, I don't want to do what everyone else does. I just want to have my triple breaded buttermilk marinated filet. What about your life? 10 seconds. The only like I care about is my own because the KFC famous chicken chicken sandwich is so good. You're up. It's getting loud again here tonight. 9.24 remaining in the third period. And another big face up outside the bomber boom line between Delinchin and Runke. Bombers win the face off. It goes right back here to Cole Township. Up the middle. Checked in that time by Mueller. Miley took him to the ice. Buck bounces to the uh, line. Held in by Patrick. At least he sold it. I think it might have come out. I think so, too. <laughs> Mueller back of the net. Boy, it'll be interesting if they can pot one here, boy. Mueller tied up back of the goal here by Miley. Went on trying to dig it free. Mueller so tough to take off the puck. For Galenchin in the corner. Pinned up again. Runke will try to dig it free. Got a stick on it, but it looks like it's wedged up there pretty good. Flintfong continues to work hard. They do. Nice job by Galenchin. He comes out with the puck out front. Swatted away by Herdnicka. 
It's a chance for a breakaway. Here's Forrest in a long four shoots. Deep oh. Harbin Laser Hill. Forrest on the breakaway. Harbin Laser Hill. Save of the year. Hughes. How does he get that open? Mike behind the defenseman. I don't know, but holy smokes. What a stop by Harmon Laser Hill. Forrest on the clear cut breakaway. And another big save. Boy, these goaltenders. Yeah. They got to be the MVPs or team in this series. Right? Absolutely. I mean, we talked about Cam Hurdlicka, but Laser Hume has better numbers. Uh, he, you know, Hurdlicka has more, a lot more shots, but. Uh, and Laser Hume instrumental in that game six win. Yeah, yes, that's, uh, that's exactly right. What a stop by Harmon Laser Hume on the breakaway by Forrest. Trombley set for the face stop here against Forrest again inside the Flint Flon zone. Bombers off the uh, draw, picked up by Noah Hool back of the net. Noah Hool, we talk about all the minutes that Babbitt's been logging. I'll tell you what, Noah Hool played a ton yes, of this series, too. Yes, he has. So has Richmond, who's got the puck right now. Richmond up the boards. Kane can't pick it up. The puck will fall inside the Estevan zone. Mercer trying to get free. He's got the Bomber goal here tonight, but he can't knock it down. Bruins have it. They'll play it back to center. That's picked up here by Philly and bouncing puck out of the glove that time of Laser Hume. This is Richmond. He's got a hold of it off the boards. Puck knocked down at center by Whittingham. He'll send it back in. Poole's got to go back. Be careful. Look out. Puck at the side. That's the Bruins jab away. Almost knocked in that time here by uh, Tachonik. Holy cow. Bruins come close yet again. That one sent it in the glove. You've got to be hard on the puck, Rob Hart. You have to. Uh, you can't be babying it like that. Couple real bad defensive miscues here. And Harmon Laser Hume, another big save here to keep the puck out. Seven fifty-two remaining in the third period. Calora set for the face stop against Sylvester in this tight one-one game. The puck will come out to center. Babak will give way to Pangira. Off the boards. Not sure where that went out of play. And boy, 35-24. It's tight again and. What a series here, Mike Slip, the one that you wonder if will ever end. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a shame there has to be a loser because they both playing great, Rob. Face off again outside the Bomber blue line. Vaughn Strucken will feed it back here to Fry. Fry had that one poked away. Stolen along the board. The chance part over top of the net that time by Kalora. And, boy, the Bomber defense is coughing up the puck steady here in yeah. the later stage of the third period. They sure are. They got a... They, again, they got it. It's like the last period. They got to shore it up for sure. Went on all kinds of breakdowns here. Very fortunate. Still a 1 1 hockey in the 50 50, close to hitting 30 grounds. You buy a ticket? I did. What do you. I didn't get one. I got too worked up. I got too much to do to get up here. I know. You're busy, man. Bruins have it. Sharp angle again. There's Laser Hume. If I fight Greg and I fight, uh, he might have to call a timeout. Yeah. Like they're, they're. I think he's thinking about it. They're getting beat here steady. Davis set for the face off again against Sylvester inside the football zone to the right of the goaltender Harmon Laser. He'll 6 5 the shots for Estevan, but there haven't been any free ones. They've all been in tight, including that breakaway moments ago. This is Sylvester up the boards again, intercepted Davis off the side of the net. Here's Sylvester. Around the boards here for Bockler. Bockler trying to push that to King, picked off by Miley. He'll keep it in. Bouncing puck, Estevan on top of it, bouncing it from the bomber net. Davis can't find it. Now he does. Cody Davis moving it well in front of the bomber net again. They fire that off the side of the goal. Barrows after it. Sylvester finally gets it out. And the puck will roll back to the, bomber, to the Estevan blue line. They'll play it ahead here to Babic. On side for Barrow. He'll chip that one ahead. Intercepted by Galenshin. Galenshin back of the net with Barrow in pursuit of him. He'll move it ahead to Mueller. Mueller to center. He'll lift it in, try to chase it down inside the Estevan zone. Mueller there pushed it to the back of that, but Babic intercepted it. Puck off the glass, set back to center. This is Duel. Trying to get that one ahead to Bridger. He'll touch it offside. They'll blow it down. Six and a half remaining in the third period. Yeah, boy, oh boy, the uh, Bruins have taken it to the Bombers here uh, in, the, in the last few minutes of this period. You know, Mike? You say the phrase, boy, oh, boy, a lot, but nothing could be truer in this third yeah, period. Yeah, I do say it a lot. Because boy, oh, boy. Yeah. Yeah. Based off outside the Bomber blue line, that's a perfect way to describe the Bombers' play here. They're so lucky this is still a 1-1 hockey game. 
Big face off here between Galinch and a little outside the football bomber blue line. Flintwood trying to get something going here. Poole hooked up on the play. He goes down. Bruins work it back in. I'm trying to think the last time Flintwood won a battle for a loose puck in a corner. Mueller tried to shot that one out. Or on the half board. Bruins have, yeah. This is Clora for the blue line. A shot that got blocked in front. Clora again back of the goal for Pangira. Bumping with Hool. They've been all over each other here tonight. Little will pick it up. Along the boards, loses the handle, picked up by Richmond. Plays it ahead to Bridger. Bridger at center will jump it in. Oh, knocks his guy down. Nice body check there. They'll take Winningham down. And racing in to get the puck is Richmond. There's a shot. Good left pad save here by Erdlicka. That's why you always shoot the puck. You just never know. Yep. Winningham back of the goal. This is Kalora. He'll bounce it off the board. Back inside the foot one zone. Cut off here by Vaughn Strecken. Tried to play that ahead to Pierce. It gets it behind the D. This is Philly and Fand on it. Held in here by Pierce. Bouncing puck into the corner here for Lees. Back of the goal. Cuts on front. Pierce trying to get a stick on his spin. Fires. Hurt like oh, I'd like to see Ryland Pierce get a goal. He's played a whale of a game. He always I don't know if he's got a magnet on him tonight or what, but the puck is hitting him everywhere. Yeah, it sure is. 5.28 remaining third period. A 1-1 hockey game here right now. 37-26 to Bruins, though. Oh, some fantastic chances, and somehow the puck has stayed out with this big face-off inside the Esteban zone. Here they come. Trombley, Kane, Mercer, Bond, Strecken. And I believe that's Fry on the back end. It goes back to Fry. The Bond, Strecken. Quick shot wide again, back of the net. But put out front to Trombley, shoots it! Oh, big save, Hurtlicka there! Robbing Trombley in tight. That's the guy you want getting a shot away at that proximity. Trombley back of that, trying to get free again. Runky on top of him. I'll tell you what, this is the most back checking I've ever seen Runky do in a, in a hockey game. Barrow back the other way. Dushes it off to, Kit, to uh, Davis down the wing. Lost the handle, gets it back. Back of the net. Fry will push it over to Kane. Kane. Lifts it out, bouncing puck, picked off the right side, picked up by Trombley, shoots, heard like a looking behind him, but he's got it. If Trombley breaks on a little bit quicker, he gets more room. Yeah, yeah, I, you know, he, hindsight's 20, 20 probably best to maybe make a move on her, her like there, but uh, at least he got the shot away. What are the shots? 9 6 for the bomber. 4 48 remaining here. In the third period, a 1-1 hockey game. Dupereau off the faceoff goes down. Here's Silvestri. Back around the board for Dupereau. He'll knock it down. No, he won't. Puck is knocked away from him. Bruins will back it off the board. Back down the ice. Should be a nice and call. Tactical touch-up. And Flint's going to get a big faceoff back in the Esteban zone here. Boy, oh boy. Four <laughs> It's a nail-biter. The folks here, I'm looking to my left here, are on the edge of their seat. And, uh... Very tense in the in the stands here tonight. 4.36 remaining. Silvestri set for the base stuff against Little. Bruins win the draw. Winning him around the boards. The Calora to the line, but not out. Knocked down by Teague. Blocked in front. Of, rebound, Silvestri. And that gets partially blocked here by Teague and Little, who might have saved the game. Silvestri again. Throws it back in tight for Dupereau. Back out front, nobody there. Silvestri will pinch in. Winningham knocked it down around the boards. It goes. Kalora again just gets it out this time. Here's King. Plays it ahead to Silvestri. Silvestri, the big game winner in game six, hits the referee. The puck will go inside the Bruin line. Picked up by Kalora. Gets that one over to Wilson. He'll lift the puck back down the ice. Richmond whipped on it inside his own zone. Good thing Pangura stopped. 350 remaining in the third period. This is Richmond. Up the middle. What a pass. Mueller, though. That can't track it down. What a feed by Richmond. Boy, oh, boy, that stretch pass to Mueller they've used a lot in this playoff series. Started using it at the end of the year, and Brock Mueller scored a couple of goals that way and nearly got one there. Big hello to Lambert Stumberg, listening in Humboldt. He's a PA announcer for decades. One of the best voices I've ever heard. Did a fantastic job, and I think he's wondering... Will the Bombers be able to pull this one out and make it back to Humboldt again for another epic series? Boy, these Esteban Bruins don't appear to be going anywhere, no, though, do they? No, they want to go to Battleford. Yes, 3.39 remaining. 40 to 26 is the shots in favor of the Bombers. Bridger, Galenshin, Mueller up front. It's Richmond and 
Noah Hool on the back end. Bombers win the draw. Richmond shot. Blocked in front. Lindbaugh can't get a stick on it. Now they do. Galinch in the back header. Turned away. They try to get it back out front. Galinch, another guy's been buzzing all over the place again tonight. Clint Bonnell hold it in. Runke gets a piece of that. Knocked it down, but Clint Bonnell keep it in. There's Miley. Miley's got it. Oh, he almost coughed it up to Bridger. Got a stick on it. Richmond will knock it down outside the blue line. Wait for Bridger to get on side. Now he'll flip it back in. Babic. We set up, flips it over to Miley. Back to Babic. This is Babic up the boards. Picked up by Runke, and he'll redirect the puck inside the Flint Flan zone. Noah Hool is there. Noah Hool along the boards, down again. Knocked down by Barrow. Kane can't get a stick on it. Look out. Oh, that's that guy tripped up there. Woo. No call. Richmond. Inside his own zone. Forced back of the net. Now he'll hang on up the boards. Mercer will chip this one in. Here comes Kane barreling down on Wilson. Kane hasn't played the entire series either, getting back from an injury. Puck lifted out. Von Struck and waited for it at center. Tried to flip it back ahead. He does. Wilson will knock it down. Two and a half remaining here in the third period. This is Guy, the Estevan D-man. Guy down the wing. Trying to come back to uh, to Chonik. Who had that great chance earlier tonight. Bomber throws the corner for Bockler. Bockler. Trying to come back to Dutro too far. Cut off on the Bruins side of center by Kalora. This is Kalora. Drops it back to Babic. Babic up the middle. That'll be a nice big face off back inside Estevan territory. Wow, Rob. It's... Uh... It's, uh, it's tense right now, I'll tell you. Poopsie's fake hair is uh, turning green, I think. He's so excited. So that's set for the base off against Forrest. Right of the goaltender, Cam Hurdlicka. Off the draw. The blue line, Fry will slap it in. Bouncing puck, so that's free back of the goal. He's got Dupro and Bacher with him. Some good dangerous weapons to get out there for Flintfoam, but they're not getting any room tonight. Babbitt will get a hold of it. Flips on a uh, bad on it in front of his own net. Here comes Pangera. Down the wing, across the bomber line, bouncing puck. Pangera gets it back. Shoots it home. If that hits the net, it's in. Laserhoom had no idea where that was. Little again. Side of the net, knocked away by Laserhoom. Loose puck back of the goal. Von Strecken trying to dig it free. Fry hauls his guy down. Von Strecken gets to it eventually. Up the boards, outside the zone, a minute 26 to go. Miley at center to Pangara. Knocked away here by Bockler. Here's Bockler, dumping the puck in deep, bouncing puck. Heard the couple grab it. He thought about flipping it, but yeah. he'll hang on. And guess who was down there? Mueller. Boy, he's quick. I thought he was going to go off the ice. I looked away, and there he was hammering in on uh, on Herdlicka. 115 remaining in the third period. A 1-1 hockey game here tonight. 40 to 26 is the shots for Flintwan. Runke for the Bruins, and Mercer has got the power play goal for Flintwan. Bridger set for the face off against Runke. Off the draw, Mueller. Knocked it down. Oh, up front behind Galenshin. Davis will get it out. Bouncing puck. Here comes Barrow. Across the barber line. He'll hang on to it. Pushed to the corner that time by uh, King. The big uh, gunner for the Bruins are out there as well, including Runke, who's got the goal. Runke back of the net. He'll hang on to it. This is Runke. Along the boards, will flip it back of the goal for Davis. Galinch and trying to contain him. Back of the net as well for Barrow. Bridger will reach in and grab it. 48 seconds to go. Liam Bridger to Mueller. Tapped it in and puck will roll inside the Bruins zone. We're down to 40 seconds remaining in the game. Bruins have the puck back to their own net. It's Weddingham. Kane thought about chasing him. He'll back off and he'll feed the pass to Wilson. Wilson stick handling the center. Wilson across the bomber line. Knocked away. Here Kane will flip it back out. Puck a roll inside the Estevan zone. Babic waits for it. Back up the middle. Nobody home. Icing against Estevan. 15.7 seconds to go. Mike Slip. Big face off. Get your best face off man out there now. That's Jacob Mike Brockler. Brockler. Here he comes. Jacob Brockler. Here we go, Buckler. So I think great. Sylvester's going to take it. He's a good face-off guy, too. Yeah. You can't go wrong with any of those no, guys. No. Buckler, Sylvester, Dufero, yeah. Richmond, and Houle. Bobbers win the draw. Houle, shot. That gets blocked. Buckler throws another shot. Jack Fly fails wide. What a chance. Here's Barrow for the Bruins at center. Seven seconds to go. Barrow can't get around Richmond. Flintwan will chip the puck out. Sylvester behind the knees. Got a hurry. Died. Second shoots it. 
And we're going to overtime for the third time in the series, Mike Sweat. Here we go again, Rob Hart. Here we go again. What a save by Harmon Laser Hume on Forrest on that breakaway. Say, you called it, Rob. Save of the year. It sure was. Boy, impressed with Ryland Pierce come back uh, last two games for the suspension. Uh, Brock Mueller playing fantastic. Strombley with a few good chances. The puck just, just can't seem to get their hands on the their stick on the puck, but and they got to be stronger on the passes and clearing the puck out of their zone. Overtime for the third time, and like I said, this series has had everything, Mike. Uh, are you surprised we're going to overtime here tonight? No, I'm not surprised. I kind of wish we weren't. <laughs> I wish the well, it, it, it'd be a good thing. It wouldn't want to lose the regulation. It was close. No, I, it, as long as the Bombers won in, in regulation. But yeah, you're right, Rob. That's why we uh, that's why we come to hockey games to watch the, the seventh game in, in overtime. Who could ask for more? Jeremy Corrigan is here, and I said to him, if the game goes into overtime, pop up in the booth. He kind of laughed at me. I'm hoping he's coming up. But anyway. What a game tonight, and these Estevan Bruins, they come in here and play. i, I got to be honest, Mike, uh, I thought if Flint Bomb would come up with an intensity tonight, I might be able to take it to them a little bit, but uh, yeah. the Bruins have answered. I, I give them full marks here they tonight. They sure have. Uh, they, uh, they're they all over, uh, and, and and you're right. Uh, well, I think the Bombers did come with intensity, but the, the Bruins have been able to answer that call. So uh, uh, let's see what happens. Uh, as you say, usually in overtime, Teams are a little tentative, but uh, uh, we'll have to see what happens. 1-1 through 60 minutes to play. Corrigan is on his way up here. We're going to chat with him next. Boy, this is a series that just doesn't want to end. No. No, it doesn't. You're listening to Great Furniture Flintflon Bomber Playoff Hockey once again here on 1029 CFAR and FlintflonOnline.com. Clear. You're busy. And nobody knows that more than you. And you forget things like appointments, where you put your keys, even to eat. Just a friendly reminder from Eddie's Family Foods to get a bite from the grab-and-go section or the full flavor of the meat department. Eddie's knows that for your family, you can't forget. So remember, they have fresh store-made items you can't get anywhere else. Eddie's Family Foods, your uptown grocery store, still big enough to serve you and small enough to care. Crane's Pizza apologizes for being closed today, but do not fret as they will return for regular hours tomorrow. Again, Creighton's Pizza closed today, but back open tomorrow. And that's when you can call 688-2080 and fight for the last slice. Hud Bay is proud to be a sponsor of this Bomber broadcast. From donations for bursaries, hockey schools, clubs, community events, charities, and so Ten much seconds. more, Hud Bay has supported our community with dedication and generosity, contributing to events and organizations. Hud Bay thanks the people of Flin Flon for their continued support. You're on. And we're back at the Whitney Farm, and look out overtime coming up here for the third time here in the series. No goals in the third period. Shocks favorite Flin Flon 10-6. For regulation, it's the Bombers 40, it's the Bruins 26. Estevan 0 for 2, Flintflon did get another power play, but didn't get much going. They're 1 for 3. Jeremy Corrigan once again on from the league brass is here, and uh, boy, these Estevan Bruins, uh, I, I mentioned it to you, and they look like anything like a sixth place team, and I gotta be honest, I mean, I know I, I don't take anything away from them, they made some good moments. Their uh, performance here tonight is uh, very impressed. I'm surprised and impressed at the same time, you know what I mean. I think that's a fair assessment. Uh, I think you have a very hostile environment at the Whitney Forum in a Game 7. Uh, obviously didn't have your greatest performance in Game 6. Make the 7 hour drive up north and uh, you come out and I guarantee if you said to them we'll take Game 7 going into overtime, one shot advances you to the next round of the playoffs, I think uh, you probably take it. Yeah, I think if you're the coaching staff, you have to be pretty happy. You know, despite it being 40 shots on goal for the Flin Flon Bombers, not much when it comes to secondary opportunities for them. I think the Estevan Bruins have done, they got back to what made them successful earlier on, maybe in Game 5, Game 4, especially Game 4, yeah. where, when uh, they shut out the Bombers 3-0. Uh, but they're boxing the Bombers out. They're not allowing any secondary opportunities. It's one and done. Cam heard like I'm making a save, them quickly clearing a rebound. But I will say, I want to give a shout out to uh, Keegan Little, because with about three minutes left, I was standing behind the net, 
And the shot came out, and the rebound there was a wide open net. And if it wasn't for Keegan, yeah, that would have been. That would have been in the back of the net, and we might not be uh, doing this interview wrong. And that's still <laughs> there, too. Yeah. But how about the save that Harmon Laser Hill makes on Forrest? Had, uh, Jamie Nugenbauer, I didn't see it, how it went, but apparently, uh, well, you saw it. Runky uh, lo- yeah. lost his helmet. And yeah, so what happened was Runky lost his helmet in his own circle, and as a result, of course, if you lose your helmet, you have to go straight off to the or bench. Or you get a penalty. Or you get a penalty. So Runky skated off, and what he did he was very smart. I'll give him credit. He skated to the near gate, right. a forward came out of the far gate, went straight towards the Bombers' blue line. As a result, he was wide open, and he had a country mile to walk in, but like you said, Harmon Laser Hume with his best save of the night, and you know what? I, I was mentioning it down at ice level. Interesting, because at that time, that was only Harmon's third shot of the yes. period, and it was like 11 minutes in, so you get, you're touching the puck in a, high, in a breakaway in a tie hockey game in Game 7, and, and you make a big stop, and uh, he's probably going to have to make a few more big stops because the Bombers want to advance. Well, wow, this Esteban Brown the team, they battled hard. But what a series it's been. It's gone all seven games, and now we're going to get bonus hockey again. And Do we need one of these teams have anything left for the next round now, uh, Jeremy? I mean, really? Well, and then you mix in the travel. Well, we haven't even. I, I, I mean, I did the drive today, Rob, and I'm pooped, and we're going overtime. I know. No. It's been tough. No, no. You know what? That's, I guess we'll find that out come Friday. Because it doesn't matter which one of these teams advances. The two best teams in the league are waiting in the Humboldt Broncos and the Battle for Stars, and yeah. both have had lengthy rests. Yes, both have been off since last Friday. Yeah. For sure. And, and you know, that also plays a factor. So it'll be interesting to see, obviously, uh, obviously we have to determine a winner, and then obviously the second round matchups then uh, are determined, but then we'll see how that team then, see if they have any gas in the tank come Friday. What a game it's been, but you're right. Uh, Esteban has blocked the Bombers out. Dupereau, so has, Dupereau has been totally quiet tonight. Walker has for the most part as well. Sylvester's had a couple of chances. Probably the best line for Flint Flon, at least for my money, the last period and a half or so, is probably the Pierce Stibby, Pierce Stibby and Lee's line. And you know what? We always say in playoff hockey, usually it's your third and your fourth line to contribute the most, and usually that's the difference in a playoff series. And I wouldn't be surprised if the Flint Flon Bombers win this hockey game. It's that line contributing and finding the back of the net. Goal post by Pierce earlier tonight. Yes. I got a quick question for you. Is I this the f- best defensive hockey you've seen Runky play? Ooh. He's back in his own zone a lot. I don't there, remember. I mean, there. I. Well, y- you know what? I, in a game seven like this, when it comes to the 20 year olds, I expect sure. I expect them to make, be all out every end of the ice. He has had a phenomenal game. I mean, that, sh- that shot was a picture perfect shot on Harmon Laser Hume in the second period. You're right, though. He has been up and down the ice, and he's been. A lot of the Bruins forwards have been very good defensively, though, tonight, too. The thing that I'm noticing about this game, too, and you're right, and I think it kind of took a turning point there in games three and four in Esteban, these scrums and the boards, sure. Flint Flon rarely wins one. I mean, Mueller's been great for them. He's tough. To, him and Mercer have been the best forwards, but, I mean, probably those guys still not a, exactly 100%, probably can't get in there and dig away as much as they'd like. But these uh, scrums along the boards and these battles for the loose puck, Runky in particular, they're winning a lot of those battles. Well, and even a guy like Sal Calora has been huge, no pun intended, because he's a big big player. But he's been great down low in the corners as well. And, yeah, you see it down low in the board battles. And, and you know, maybe that's something that uh, the Bruins coaching staff has been, you know, keeping an eye on. Maybe we, that's how they have to be successful against the Flint Flon Bombers, is continue to work the puck around the outside, down low in the corners, and then try to drive it out in front. And it, it appears that's something that they're definitely targeting. But you're right. They are doing a great job in the board battle down low. Quick overtime or long overtime? You know what? I've learned in this series, Rob, that it, you, you really can't make any predictions. No, you so, can't. you know what? I'm not going to make a prediction. I expect one team's going to be very happy by the end of the night. <laughs> yeah, it's been, a, it's been an epic battle for sure, going the complete distance, but now you're getting overtime again. The series has had everything. Regardless, you know what? Whatever way, whatever way this game goes, it's been a great series. It's been, and it's been everything I think fans would have wanted between these two teams meeting in the final once again. Well, and you know what? And when, it, when this is said and done, nobody's going to be able to say that neither one of these teams gave it their all. I mean, Flint no, had some injury all. problems. The Bruins have run into some injury problems. Both yep. teams have had players suspended. Yep. Mm-hmm. You know, you can go on down the line. There's been on both teams a lot of guys that have colds and flus on both these clubs. I mean, these two teams are really, really got it. They, they battled hard, and you can tell that. Neither one wants their season to come to an and, end tonight. And at the end of the day, between these two teams, after seven games, one shot's going to make the difference. 
certainly is. Like I said, will either team that's left have anything left for the next round? No. To be determined. <laughs> and, and here's the thing, too, before I let you go. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. is an opening round series. It doesn't feel like an it's opening round no. series to me. And, this, and I'll tell you what, it's it seems good. like we've been playing these guys for a month. Oh, you feel, for you guys, it probably feels like you've been playing them for about a year and a half. <laughs> oh, I know, but in particular, I mean, this has been long. It has. I mean, you mix in the travel, and I think that definitely plays a part. And in now it. three overtimes. And three overtimes, but I, has it's been an outstanding series. It and certainly it, has. Yeah, and you know what? It, it's it's a shame that one of these teams is going to have to lose, but you know, when you look back at this series again, like I said earlier, I think this series has lived up to the hype. It's lived up to all the storylines, and uh, you know what? It's only fitting. It's only fitting this game's going to be decided in overtime in game seven. We'll see how it goes, Jeremy. Good to see you again. Great Thanks a lot for too. coming up. I really appreciate it. I know. It. Anytime, Rob. Anytime. Hopefully, I'll see you uh, in Humboldt on the weekend. <laughs> we'll, we'll see. All right. That's Thanks Jeremy Corrigan once again from the media desk here for the SKHL. He does, of course, a fantastic job. We'll take another break. Mike Slip going to find his way back to the booth. We'll be joined by him momentarily. And that uh, overtime period is upon us. Fans getting jacked up, sure trying to fire up the home team. Next goal wins here on 102.9 CFER and flintblononline.com. Claire. Staple items like bread and buns. Okay. And uh, Paulette Berthelot from Mexico listening live. So good, you think you're dreaming. Yeah, you're no, not. they show the picture. You're yeah, they are. They're on the resort there. Co-op. I know you're shocked, but you shouldn't be. Because the co-op serves up hot and delicious baked goods every single day. And the only place better than their bakery is Mom's Kitchen, and that's debatable. The North of 53 Co-op, you're at home there. R.A.G. 1987 Limited in the Paw now have ultra-quiet generators in stock for any purpose. The ultra-quiet 1000i is one of the quietest gas power generators on the market. Delivered 1,000 watts of power, the 3000 IES features the Honda Eco Throttle System, offering amazing fuel efficiency, lasting 7 to 20 hours on a single tank. From recreation to industrial, get your hands on a Canadian built and tested Honda generator at RAG 1987 Limited in the Paw, your local Honda dealer. Brew for two at Chicken Chef. From 7 until close, every Tuesday night, you can enjoy their famous chef burger for $2 when you purchase an on-tap draft. Plus, Wild Wing Wednesdays every Wednesday night from 7 till close. Order a grown-up beverage and receive an order of Jumbo Chef Wings for free. Specials Tuesdays and Wednesdays, but Ten seconds. Chicken Chef for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, it always feels like home. Dine in or take out at Chicken Chef. Proud sponsors of this bomber broadcast. You're on. Welcome back to the Whitney Forum. We're getting ready for overtime. Mike Slip, boy, what a series! And the question being, what's your gut feeling? Long overtime, short overtime? I'm going to Jeremy. I no comment. I I don't know, Rob. I I think it's gonna. The pace is gonna be slow to start, like we suggested. Uh, who knows? Do these bounces, these teams? I'll tell you one thing. There are a lot of nervous Flintlon Bomber dads down there. Super old, Bob Strecken, King. Uh, I was talking to them all and they all look like, uh, they all, all look like they just wanted to crawl under a rug. They're, uh, you know, they, uh, they want this as much as their son. Yeah, I guess it's gonna be tough. You've been in that position before, haven't you? I have, and, uh, Works for you, your kids are rolling. Well, and I was just going to say, I know the Laser Humes are back in Creston, D.C., and uh, they have a hard time watching. We, we commiserate together when we see each other about being goalie parents, but uh, no better position in sports. Well, if it wasn't for Harmon Laser Hume, this game would be over. Yeah, and you, the Laser Humes should be very, very proud of uh, how their son played this playoff series really all year. Um, well, like I said, Mike, he was great in game six, and that's a big breakaway save on Forrest. Yeah, that was a huge save. Best of the year for him, I think, Rob. I mean, I guess that's easy to say now, but... Uh, well, they needed that one for sure. The biggest of the year for him, absolutely. So, overtime, here's something for you. What do you think if the playoffs, they went with what they did the regular season, three-on-three three overtime, it would really negate those long games? It would. We talked about I'd like to see it. Yeah, I I, 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 I got to disagree with you. I think, you know, you got a great series like this. It goes to seven games. 
you go into overtimes. I'd hate to see it three on three. I do like it in. I love it. Regular season, love it. That thing is no shootout. Yes, no kidding. International hockey there is, but yeah. not of course in Hulu. Play back inside the Bruins zone. We're underway overtime. Just one goal each way. Both these goaltenders absolutely fantastic. Again, the Bruins will ice it. And we're going to face off back inside the Estevan zone. Manitoba Junior Hockey League tonight. The Blizzard have beaten uh, Burton 6 4. They're up two games to one. Goffman a big win. They double up on the Stamp Meter 6 3. Back in that series down 2 1. Neverville surprises Portage tonight 5 yeah. 4. So the Terriers still up two games to one. And we've got uh, Steinbeck ahead of Winkler 3 1 in the third period. Von Sprecken will flip the puck back across the Estevan line. Babic is there. Back of his own net. Miley had a little trouble with it. Gets a hold of it. Around the boards it goes. Davis will wait for it. Davis can't knock it out. Now it comes back. Rolls to Von Sprecken inside his own zone. He's got to go back and get it with Barrow on top of him. Von Sprecken will slow things down. And back of his own net. He shovels that over to Fry. Loud Whitney for him here for the overtime period. That's Kane at uh, center, knocked away from him. Gets it back, he'll tap it ahead, chance for Trombley! Trombley cutting in, Trombley, back in the forehand, he's gonna drop really? penalty here, Mike Slip. Tried to wrap around as well. What a chance for the Bombers, 59 seconds into overtime. The high fly, Jeremy Trombley. And again, that's a good penalty, because if he doesn't do that, it might be over. It is, I, I doubt it may call it, but I was looking for maybe uh, a scoring chance. You have to. Penalty shot, but... Uh, but yeah, it was a scoring chance. It was a holding call. Jeremy Trombley check off with the torpedoes there, Mike. You know he had the goal in his sights. Mike Reagan, is he calling a timeout? He is, yeah. Well, then we just we just came back for break. We'll stay here. Yeah. 19:01 to go, but what an opportunity! Jeremy Trombley took off, and was that close to getting it alone there? Boy, oh boy, he, had, he looked. That was close. Whittingham, the defense, and like I said, to, to run the replay on that, he, he has to hold him up because he, he had a step on him. Yeah, and he could have made the move on uh, Herbica in there. Boy, here we go. Power play right off the hop. Fourth of the night for the Bombers. Jeremy Trombley took off, and one-on-one, -on -one, he is really tough to stop. And Whittingham got beat by a step, and he dropped him, forced him to the outside, but got too much in the jersey. Yeah, absolutely, and it was a scoring chance. You have to call that, and uh, good on the referee for doing so. Well, the Bombers call the timeout. They're going to go for broke here on the power play. And all the big guns, Crop Lake, Silvestri, Buckler, Dutero, and Richmond. Four forwards, Mike Slip. Puck set in for Silvestri. Along the boards, Runky can't clear. Knocked down by Richmond, the only D-man out there. His shot! Deflex goes to Trombley at the side of the net. Back to Buckler. Trombley. Once again, has it back up. Buckler, a shot! That hits the stick, goes over top of the net. Dupro will knock it down. Back of the goal that goes. Sylvester trying to get a stick on it here. Bombers with that lethal power play. They do have a power play goal in the game. Bavick, though, knocks it down. Gets it past Richmond. Down the ice. Here comes Harvard Laser Hume. Well out of his net. Nice alert play to Dubrow, throws it in, oh! oh my goodness, oh my goodness, off the boards and in, Hurt like that, this plays the puck, Bombers going to humble Mike Slip, they sure are Rob Hart, a picture of that, they sure are, boy oh boy, what a shame, Cam Hurt with a, a funny bounce, and in it goes, off the boards and in, Clipbuck takes it in overtime, and we will see the football Broncos on the weekend. The Flint Quad Bombers finding a way to get it done. We've got to feel bad for Kevin and wait to let the puck like that if he played so well. He just is moving to his left. Touch down, stop the, uh, the slide boards and beat him. And, and real, you know, obviously being a Flint Quad guy, I'm happy, but... What a shame for Cam Hurdlicka. He deserved a better paint, I'll tell you that, Robert. It came off the boards. He went out. He anticipated it was going to go to the corner. And it bounces in. And a tough one to beat him, who was incredible. And what a tough way to lose it. That's going to come a minute 35 in the overtime period. Cole Dupere will get the winner. Probably not the way we envisioned Dupro get the winning goal. No. 
but holy cow. As they say in golf, Rob, no pictures on the scoreboard, on the scorecard. Crowd's going nuts here. What a big victory for this franchise. Again, they find a way to get it done. It is a fluky goal that wins it. I'll tell you, nobody happier than Alex Mons Kraken. Excess of Van Bruin. Look at him out there. And I know his dad is too. His dad was very nervous. Oh my goodness, what a way to win the hockey game to keep the newest ceremonial uh, handshakes. Mike Slip, stop and knock the photos here for our uh, blog. We appreciate that. And what a series it was between these two epic rivals. That's a tough goal for Cam Hermica, but I'll tell you right now, this guy's an amazing goaltender. His 66 save performance here in Game 5, Mike, I think it'll be a game that we may be talking about for a long time. Yeah, he, uh, boy, oh boy, and, and even tonight he played great. He did 41 shot, Rob. That's, he let in 30, he shot 39 of those. That's, uh, and really the goal that caught it was, uh, a, you know, was a fluke. But as they say, no pitchers on the scorecard. Look at the uh, handshake. Look at the way these guys are greeting each other. This was a hell of a series, and you could just tell there was, you know, we talk about the rivalry, the bad blood, all that other BS that was going on with some of the fans. Yeah. But when it comes down to being on the ice, you can see a mutual respect here for each other. Coach DeKarnick said that earlier. You know, you, you really hate each other on the ice. But now, like you say, Rob Hart, it's respect. That's hockey. That's the beauty of hockey. These guys will battle hands and fists and foot and swear at each other and do whatever. But after the game, they can shake hands and uh, and uh, congratulate each other. What a series it was. The bomb responded way to get her done here in an exciting game number seven. It comes a minute 35 in overtime. Cole Dupro will get his second. It is a power play goal. And boy, the fans here are just absolutely it. I mean, absolutely. Uh, nobody's left. Yeah. Wow. Some great hockey players on the S of Van Bruins, all of them. I mean, again, no, no, we talk about this a lot with the Bombers this year. No baggage on the S of Van Bruins. They all, uh, they all played great. They certainly did. There's the handshake between the coaches here. What a rivalry it's become. Oh. And I tip my hat to Esteban, and I'm going to have the series here, a sixth-place hockey team. Played nothing like it. Took the Bombers right to the wire, literally. Won a game here, which is never easy to do. Almost won a second game here. Yeah, you, you thought, you know, we thought it was going to be a quick series. How long were we at this? left in the period. They did get it quick, so uh, good for the Flimpon Bombers. Good for Flimpon. Listen, Flimpon Bomber fans, you, they, they were here, but Rob, you, people were texting from all over the world uh, listening and watching and watching Flimpon. If, if, if you don't think the Flimpon Bombers mean something to this town, you're wrong. What a what it was, and you're right, it was great. To have all these people reaching out, whether it was through hockey TV, whether it was through our radio broadcast, whether it was through Nolan Cole's radio broadcast, and it was a fantastic series, and uh, Bombers aren't going to have long to catch their breath, but boy, no. bring on the Humboldt Broncos. We've had a lot of good uh, series with them throughout the years as well. Boy, our, our video crew across the way, and uh, the press is even excited. They're, they're so jacked up. Everybody's so happy. Uh, but boy, oh boy, I do feel for Cam Hurdlicka as a goalie dad. That's a tough one. Oh, man, the last, he, he's got another year, doesn't he, Rob? I think he does. Uh, but he is, I hope so, because he deserves a better fate than that uh, for the last shot of the year. But uh, just a funny bounce off. He does have another year, yeah. Yeah, just a funny bounce off of these win one uh, Whitney forum boards. And uh, that's the way she goes. Bombers will take it in overtime, a hard-fought victory for sure. We'll take a break. we got lots to get to for the Whitney Forum tonight. 
Post-game show awards are coming up. We've got the Great North Post-game report. And, of course, uh, we'll get things ready for the Humboldt Broncos and the Elder Peterson Arena, I believe. That series will kick off on Friday. Yeah, Bombers in overtime. Fluky goal by Cole Dupro, but they all count if they go in. Bombers find a way to get her done here on 102.9 CFAR and ClintFlockOnline.com. Clear. Look at all the features on my new washer and dryer. This one that is... That was exciting. Good. And with this one here, I can program a, a delayed start. Though I haven't figured that one out yet. Oh, and it's got all these lights over here. I have no idea what they mean. Oh, and over here... Sophisticated, not complicated, with a Whirlpool washer and dryer... Ten total. At the Center, you get the technology yep. without the confusion, and you can ask all your questions before you buy. Whirlpool washer and dryers are simple and efficient, and when you get your Whirlpool at Creighton Furniture and Appliance Center, you know what you're taking home. It's a great time for a new Ford F-150 from your friends at Northland Ford. Start your journey with 3.99% APR purchase financing for up to 72 months on select 2023 F-150 models. Plus, eligible Ford owners get a $750 bonus for a limited time. Already love the truck you're driving? Come check out their huge selection of NV rims that will make any model of truck or SUV pop. Just stop by or call and ask for the parts department. Northland Ford in Flin Flon, where they're loaded up on trucks and proud to be the dealership you tell your friends about. Crane's Pizza apologizes for being closed today, but do not fret as they will return for regular hours tomorrow. Again, Creighton's Pizza closed today, but back open tomorrow. And that's when you can call 688-2080 and fight for the last slice. You're busy, and nobody knows that more than you. And you forget things, like appointments, where you put your keys, even to eat. Just a friendly reminder from Eddie's Family Foods to get a bite from the grab-and-go section or the full flavor of the meat department. Eddie's knows that for your family, you can't seconds. forget. So remember, they have fresh store-made items you can't get anywhere else. Eddie's Family Foods, your uptown grocery store, still big enough to serve you and small enough to care. You're on. Welcome back to Whitney Forum. Boy, fans still filing out. Uh, they announced 1,005. Who's kidding? Who? There was way more people in here than that. Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. There's Alex Von Sprecken's grandpa. Uh, I, I, yeah, he's not looking up here. Uh, but uh, but uh, they, uh, they, they, they deserved it. <laughs> Alex Von Sprecken's dad, you can see him down there. He is the happiest guy going. He <laughs> they... Uh, these guys, uh, these, you know, as I said, the parents, they wanted as much for their sons and, and as, as the players do. And they live every second of every game and, and are on the edge of their seats. So, uh, you know, we, Cole Dubrow's dad never misses. Uh, I see Corey King's mom and dad down there from, uh, from Sirius. They're traveling all over to come see see us uh, here uh cory king's dad giving me the thumbs up so super exciting for everybody and it's super exciting for flint flan here's the official on the game winning goal mike slip dupro on the power play his second of the year assists to Harmon laser hume is wow. that fitting <laughs> as he kept him and he came up and played that's the puck right. up to him and he grabbed it and he fired off the boards and down the ice it went so you that's know. the official on the game winning goal a minute 35 into overtime Cole Dupereau second, Harmon Laser Hume, the assist of the power play goal. And that's the difference tonight. The Bombers find a way to get her done by a score of 2-1 to one in overtime, taking this very exciting seven-game affair, four games to three. But, boy, and again, Laser Hume, the big save on Forrest right late in the third period. Uh, um, game changer. Yeah, well, save the season. season. Season changer. Uh, but, you know, I was going to say about Harmon, he's so good with the puck. It's like having another defenseman out there. And he... he he see, and I've said this from the beginning when he showed up here in Flint Lawn, he's going to have the puck taken away every once in a while. But, boy, he looks, and if he sees the stretch pass, he hits it on the tape nine out of ten times. So he is so good with the puck and uh, calm with it. And there would have been a breakaway if he doesn't come out. And, and the thing with a goalie on those is you've got to commit. You can't think. Should I? Shouldn't I? Should right. I? You got to go or you don't. You hesitate, then it goes to the back it of your does. net. And um, off, uh, Harmon Laser Hume went and saved, uh, saved a, a, got an assist on the winning goal. 
Let's recap the final uh, the final scoring summary. Not a lot of goals tonight. Runke, his second unassisted, opened things up for Estevan at the 10.58 mark. Uh, Flynn Fong, one answer. Uh, both the goals via the extra attacker tonight. Mercer scores his third from Vaughn Sprecken and King at 12.28. No goals in the third. The Bruins had some really good chances. Again, the breakaway save on Forrest by Laser, him obviously a big one late in the third. He made a couple other big saves as well. They get it to overtime where you didn't know if it was going to be a quick overtime, a late overtime. Near the UR, Corrigan wanted to step out and uh, make a prediction. No. I don't blame you. It's tough to predict anything, but I don't think anybody would have predicted the way that this one ended. Uh, the puck was set down the ice. Harmon Laser Hume raced out after it. Played it quickly to uh, Dupereau, who I think was just on our side of center here. Left it off the boards. Uh, Pertlicka went out to, he anticipated it was going to the corner, wanted to get a beat on the puck, but unfortunately, took that funny hop and went in, and uh, the Bombers will take it in front of well over 1,000 fans tonight, winning this series, like we said, four games to three. Uh, just a one shot in overtime for Flynn They wind up with 41. The Bruins, no shot, so it winds up 41 26 through uh, regulation and a minute and uh, 35 into the extra period. But, boy, Bombers uh, will get an opportunity to face these good Humboldt Broncos with a lot of rest, and uh, we're anticipating the series will most likely start on Friday night. Yeah, yeah, boy, oh, boy. Uh, again, another big rivalry with Humboldt. Uh, um, they, the, the Bombers went in there last year uh, and, and beat uh, Humboldt in that series. Uh, Won so three games at the Elgar Peterson that, Arena. That's right. So uh, you know that... Uh, the fellas that are left in Humboldt uh, are going to remember that and want to. Well, and I think Humboldt's one. a better team this year than they were last oh, year. I Believe it or not, even without Perkins and McGrath, they yeah. made one heck of a club. He made, made a real lot of good moves at the deadline. Brought yeah. a lot of guys from Alberta. They'll yeah. be ready for Flynn Fong for sure, but you know what? The Bombers find ways to win hockey games. They find ways to get it done and uh, will be a very formidable opponent. Yeah, absolutely. It's going to be another good series, as they say. Uh, another big rivalry. Uh, uh, a series, and uh, uh, you know that's a, it can be a little hostile crowd in Humboldt too. So uh, yeah, it's going to be fun to watch. Uh, I, I'm going to have to watch the first four games on hockey TV and li- and listen to Rob Hart, uh, which isn't all that bad. But uh, you get to hear somebody else's dulcet tones instead of me here next week. So, so unfortunately, I'm going to miss it. But uh, boy, oh boy, just just awesome, just great for the Bombers. Rob, in the last two years, how we've seen some pretty awesome things in this Whitney Forum, and and both of us, uh, we get so darn excited. We're so invested, as m- most of the town is uh, invested in this team. And uh, you know, I didn't sleep last night. I know uh, some of the folks at work were having a hard time. All we could talk about at work was the game. Um, uh, one of the uh, Nikki Cork went around and did a video on who we thought was going to score the the first goal, and uh, almost everybody picked uh, Alex von Sprecken because he's right with us and we love him. But uh, but uh, no, it uh, it was a beauty. It was a, it was a great. You know, I, I'm sad we're not going to see our friend Nolan Call next door. He is, you know, you folks in Estevan, uh, you uh, you're lucky you, you got him calling your games. He's uh, he's a great young fellow and. Uh, Boy, oh boy, he can call hockey. We're going to take a break, come back with the post-game show awards, and, of course, the Great North post-game report. Boy, big night here at the Whitney Forum. Bombers in overtime. Finally, find a way to knock off these pesky Estevan Bruins who gave them everything and more here in this uh, pivotal opening round series. Cole Dupro, once again, the overtime hero. Let's take a break. Post-game show awards with Mike Slipper on the horizon here on 102.9 CFAR and FlintFawnOnline.com. Clear. You may not feel like it just yet, but spring Seven. has sprung at Pharmasave. New clothing items from the Kaplan Lily White Collection allows you to be comfy as you dress to impress. Warm up that green thumb with garden items so you're able to plan early. Plus, new electronic items and the M&M Express food market will excite and delight. With knowledgeable pharmacists, helpful staff, visit when you need to or just to check out all the new items, your life. Your store, your pharmacy. Attention! While you smile in private, it's something funny to you. Sir, no, sir. I just had Jack Link's beef jerky, sir. Jack Link's beef jerky? Sir, yes, sir. 100% beef, 100% delicious, sir. Most convenient and delicious source of protein around? Sir, yes, sir. Did you save any for me? Sir, no, sir. Gosh darn it, drop down and give me 20. Arctic Beverages, proud supplier of Jack Link's beef jerky.
staple items like bread and buns or just because items, muffins, cookies, and pies so good you think you're dreaming, but you're not. You're at the North of 53 Co-op. I know you're shocked, but you shouldn't be because the Co-op serves up hot and delicious baked goods every single day. And the only place better than their bakery is Mom's Kitchen, and that's debatable. The North of 53 Co-op, you're at home there. You're on. And we're back. Mike Slip has got his post-game show words all ready to go, Mike. And I guess we'll get things going with the KFC three-star selection here tonight. Who do you like? You've had uh, third star tonight. Uh, uh, got in a little trouble earlier in the series with a uh, with a suspension. Don't there's controversy on that, but boy, oh boy, he was uh, he's played two great games here since he's been back. Ryland Pierce is our third star of the night. Uh, um, It'll be interesting to see next year what uh, what happens with Ryland because he is property of the Everett. Everett, that's right. He was traded from Kamloops. Number two, boy, oh boy, this guy, <laughs> goaltending uh, for the ages, Cam Hurdlicka from the Esteban Bruins. <laughs> what a real shame that last goal had to go in that way. I'm glad it did, but uh, uh, he played unbelievable. One of the best goaltending displays I've seen. Cal Shell likes, but you want to hear good goaltending? First star tonight, Carmen Laser Hume. That save he made was the series winner. Um, and then getting an assist on the winning goal. He is so good with the puck. So um, we're going with Pierce, third, Herdlicka, second, and Harmer La- Harmon Laser Hume, the first. Farmer Save Warrior of the game. This guy is tenacious. He goes in the greasy spots. He beats people through the puck. Brock Mueller again. He's had a great. Uh, last quarter of the season in playoffs. So, uh, congratulations, Calgary-born Brock Mueller. Just replaying the game-winning goal there. Boy, what a <laughs> interesting way to win a hockey game. But again, it happens. The Flint Pond Bombers find a way to get it done once again. So the KFC Free Star selection here tonight. Ryland Pierce, number three. Cam Hurtlicka could make a case for the series MVP, really. Yeah. yeah he, uh, Cameron laser Hill, I mean, yeah, uh, yeah. and again, Harmon laser Hill, that big save on four slate, and uh, how fitting is it for him that he assists on the game yeah. goal here in overtime tonight. Fantastic. So the Flint Flam Bombers get her done. That's our uh, post-game show words. Mike Reagan, I'm not sure where he is. I thought he was I thought he was on his way out. He's running out of time here. We'll take one last break and come back. Uh, Mike, great job tonight. Great working with you this year. Hopefully we'll get another opportunity, like you said. Not going to be around next week, but uh, well, I guess we'll see how the Flint Pond Humboldt series goes. Yeah, I hope to be back up here, Rob. This is, I always say this, this is a sportsman, a fan's fantasy camp that I get to do this with the, uh, boy, one of the best announcers in Canada. I don't so. care what he says because he won't admit to it, but everybody knows it. Uh, and I, I said how great, how lucky Esteban is to listen to Nolan Call, Flint Pond folks, and the people who watch on hockey TV. We have the best announcer in the league, probably in junior hockey here. With well, the first, I appreciate you saying that, Mike, but there's a lot of good ones, and uh, I appreciate working with you. Thanks a lot, and uh, well, I'll, we'll bring Mike on, then I'll bring you on for a wrap-up uh, momentarily, okay? Sure, you bet. Mike Reagan's with us. We'll get him on. A lot of uh, people uh, to visit with on his way up to the booth, but we uh, finally got him up here tonight, and uh, boy, this series, Mike, uh, almost looked like it didn't want to end there. Uh, Esteban, boy, they came in here and played one heck of a road game tonight. They, uh, they played smart. They, uh, they executed, at, I mean, I don't know what their game plan was, but it seemed like they executed it to a T. And uh, our guys looked nervous most of the night, you know. We thought that uh, we had spurts where we were pretty good, but I thought that, I don't know, the nerves seemed to get to us, but hey, whatever, it doesn't matter. We got the series done. We won. Um, kind of were joking around there with on the way up. And uh, after the game there, Reese during that timeout, uh, he said, just like you drew it up, eh, coach? <laughs> so uh, it wasn't pretty, but we'll take it. The, the only thing I will say is I feel horrible for Cam. No for kidding. Goaltender, you know, to play that well in this series and for that to be the, the series winner. Yeah, um, I agree. You know, uh, he, he was he was phenomenal, and so was our goaltender. I mean, Save he makes late in the third period. Exactly. If he doesn't make that save, we're not, we're not going on to the next round here. And, and assists on the game winner, Mike. How fitting is that? Really? Yeah, he came out and played the puck up to do oh. here. Yeah. Well, I've always talked about, uh, joked around about, like, our stanchions, that we need to change them, that, that we get such weird bounces. But uh, after that one, we're keeping that one, those stanchions forever. 
I, but you, another thing, Hardy, is I told the guys that uh, all we got to do is get it back to the Whitney form, and the wit, the wit will take care of us, and the wit did take care yeah, of us no here kidding. tonight, no question about it. But unbelievable Strangest feeling. goal, of Mike, to win a series for your team. One hundred percent, Hardy. I mean, that, that I don't even think you have to ask that. Like that, that's so bizarre. So can I? Uh, so you call a timeout. Can I ask you what you're drying up for the power player? Is that a secret? You don't want to let that out. Like, what are you telling the guys to do? Just shoot the puck? Well, what, what's the well, game plan there? I mean, we've had so many different personnel on the power play over the last two weeks, right? So we worked on it this morning, um, and I just wanted to refresh everybody and just go through what our options were, let them take a deep breath, give them. I think there's one or two guys that were on the ice, so I wanted to give them, you know, some time to catch their breath. Sure, yeah. And just make sure that we were... We knew what we wanted to accomplish on it, and <laughs> I mean, we didn't uh, accomplish what, what we drew up, but uh, we got the win, and that's all that matters. And like I said, it was uh, it was a great series. We talked about it before the game. You've kind of touched on it. Estevan did not play like a sixth-place hockey team. They battled hard, and you know, what they had to do, and the, and the thing that they really did affect them today was they wouldn't let your real good offensive guys get going. Like Dupereau, Silvestri, Walker, those guys, they really held in check well. I mean, actually, it's interesting because uh, we talk about how the, the goal went in, but what a play by Trombley forcing the Estevan D-man to grab him because he beat him on a step of showing his speed. So a bit of a factor there, too, Mike. I know you get the fluky goal. I know you get the big save. But Tremblay, uh, his speed leading to that call. Yeah, I mean, it, he he obviously had an impact on it. You yeah. know, And, uh, I mean, he's now he's only going to get better as the series goes on. I think he's frustrated that he didn't bury on that chance. But, I mean, like it led to our winner here. And, um you know, I mean, he's a competitive guy, and he wants to win, and he uh, he definitely uh, wanted to bury that, obviously. But uh, we got the win, and that's all that matters. We'll move on. Humboldt Broncos, Mike. Uh, we thought that this might happen. You've seen them play them every year. You've had, you had a lot of success there last year. I, you know, the Broncos have made a lot of moves. I think they're a better team this year than they were last year overall. I like the moves they made bringing those guys from, from Alberta, and, you know, they've uh, certainly got some guys that can score a, a very uh, – Big challenge ahead for your club, for sure. Yeah, I mean, we've had uh, we've had success against them, but every year is a different year. And yeah. I mean, they're probably feeling like like we did against Estevan here that uh, you know that it was our turn, and and they're probably feeling the same way. And I think for us right now, it's just about enjoying this and taking a couple of days off and and uh, um, making sure that we try to get it as as uh, healthy as we can for that series. Well, and it, I'm assuming it's going to start on Friday. Yeah, yeah, we'll be, uh, I mean, Humboldt's already announced the dates. So. Oh, have they? So um, Friday, Saturday there, Tuesday, Wednesday here? Well, I, I would assume so. i got to talk to Barnes here and, and that. Uh, I just, I'm not sure, like, I, and i got to talk to the commissioner because uh, there could be some scheduling changes here. Um, I, and I don't want to get ahead of myself. Well, fair enough. So what you're saying, it's not set in stone. It's not set in stone, but I, I'm pretty sure we're going to be here Tuesday, Wednesday. And then from there, like the first four games, I think, are pretty much set in stone. Okay. That's just the typical way it goes. Um, but it might be because of the gap from now to the Centennial Cup. We did talk about, uh, I, you know what, Hardy, it's probably best I just don't even say anything. So just when it's announced, it'll be on the website yeah, and on your we'll, on your Facebook page. We'll make sure that we get it out there. But we're thinking it probably starts on Friday. Well, it starts Friday, 100%. Okay. Yeah, so. so we'll worry about the rest of the games after that, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Friday, Saturday in, in Humboldt. Anyway, Mike, your team finds a way to get her done again. I mean, <laughs> it wasn't easy, but I guess they, you never expect it to be easy in the playoffs, do you? No, no, no. And I got good news for you, Hardy. Shorter bus trips. <laughs> yeah, well, good news, I think, for all the players, too. They look pretty worn out, not just me. Yeah, yeah. But, hey, let's enjoy this. You know, let's enjoy this. And, uh, you know, it's that time of year, and should be extremely excited about this. Well, well, well did, I, don't, I guess we didn't sound excited enough on the air tonight, eh, Mike? Yeah, you know, I think we uh, I think we took it up to the. Are the you next... just exhausted right now? Well, I, I, yeah, I, it's been a whirlwind, but uh, but just a great series, and I just uh, really commend Estevan. I well, I thought maybe tonight you might lay it on them pretty good, but they really uh, they came out here, they fought really hard, and I, I they're a lot better hockey team I think than a lot of people thought they were. Well, I I don't think that like I don't think anybody thought they were a bad hockey club. I mean, when you look at uh, one through eight, I mean. You know, Wayburn got a lot better. You yeah, have to, yeah, you have to look at not look at their start. They were one and six, I think. So when you eliminate that, I mean, they were a good hockey club, you know. And uh, I mean, Tarts is a veteran coach, and yeah. he knows how to put together a team. And you know, they uh, they gave us everything we could handle. 
Is that a good thing, too, Mike, heading in for a tough I mean, if you win one four straight, maybe is it sometimes too easy? Is it easier if you have a battle like this? Well, we're battle-tested. There's no question and about it. And tight hockey games, three overtime games. Yeah, yeah. There's uh, there's something to be said about that. I think the important thing is, is we use the next two days to get good rest, Wednesday, Thursday, be ready for Friday. Sounds good to me, Mike. Congratulations. Thanks, Big victory. Hardy. And, again, they don't ask you how they go in, just if they go in. And it was uh, – a different way to win a series, but to keep the, the people guessing here all the time. In a couple of years, Hardy, we can say that it was like Ashton Bernard told me the one year that uh, he scored that ugly goal to, to win it for us. He said that it was uh, he deked out the defenseman, made a backdoor pass, and got it right back and scored the winner. So we can tell that story in a couple of years. See, and here's the thing, too. I've been calling these games since 97, which we're going on a quarter century. This year, we continue to find different ways for, for things to happen. Never the travel, never experienced the travel we've experienced in this round, you know, and just some of the different things that have happened throughout the course of the last couple of years. And, and like this is one of those goals that you probably won't forget by the way that it was done. And you know, the goaltender coming out making the play. Like I said, this series had everything in it you could possibly imagine. It really did. It really did, Hardy. So I'm I'm just glad it's over with, and I'm glad we're moving on. Guys worked hard, got the job done, did what they had to do in Estevan, and a big victory here tonight, Mike. And I know that they're pumped up and excited and. Uh, what a way to go into the next round. 100% Hardy. Mike Reagan, the victorious head coach. His team in the Humboldt Broncos will meet yet again. It's the SJHL semifinal. Like he confirmed, it will begin at the Elgar Peterson Arena on Friday. And, of course, we'll go from there. But a big victory tonight. The Bombers get it done. Cole Dupro, the overtime hero. One last break. We'll come back with a wrap-up here momentarily here on 102.9 CFER and FlintFlonOnline.com. Clear. Jim's Custom Doors and Windows is your Three. trusted local windows, doors, and blind store. But did you know they also install overhead doors? Gonna do if you said to or not? Properly installed. I was going to if you said to or not, bro. Against extreme weather, help you save on your energy bill, and can increase the value of your home by up to four percent. Well, if you did it, now you do. Plus, they also have lock and key services, helping you protect your home from the elements. Jim's Custom Doors and Windows. Call them today: six eight seven seven zero seven one. What are you doing with that KFC famous chicken chicken sandwich? I am unwrapping it, enjoying it, and saving the spicy one for later. No, 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 no. Take a picture of the famous chicken chicken sandwich from KFC, hashtag it, reel it, post it, boost it, make a long video, reaction video, tutorial video. Nah, I don't want to do what everyone else does. I just want to have my triple breaded buttermilk marinated filet. What about your likes? The only like I care about? is my own because the kfc famous chicken chicken sandwich is so good bailey homes knows that you want your home to be just that your own they're ready to move homes and on-site builds are customized so that you get exactly what you want bailey homes prides themselves on the quality of the build and providing you with every aspect of their expertise with years of experience building and moving homes to the north let Bailey Homes make your dream home a reality. Call toll-free 1-855-773-0217 or visit... This is the last... Yeah, you're... Uh, you're on. All righty, we're back here at the Whitney Forum. Mike, slip quickly before we sign off. Uh, what a victory for the football Bombers. And again, like we said, uh, you could look at it one way, I guess, about being tired and fatigued, but uh, you're really definitely battle-tested uh, battle for sure. As you get ready for those Humboldt Broncos. So, uh, yeah. the Estevan Bruins delivered. I mean, they really did. I mean, they forced it to, again to overtime here tonight. And uh, Bombers had to work hard to win this. Yeah, they sure did. You know, I mentioned uh, hockey players and the hockey family and how tight it is. I just watched uh, Alex Von Sprecken meet uh, his ex-teammates, Mitch Koner and uh, Cody Davis. And uh, gave him a hug uh, behind the, in between the dressing rooms. Uh, you know, as I say, they and, and Coach Tatarnik said it earlier that they battle and hate each other on the ice, but afterwards uh, they're, uh, they, they show their respect. And I know that uh, uh, Alex is friends with both Mitch and Cody, and uh, boy, Alex and and, uh, and uh, Coder went at it all year, but uh, uh, those are things I love about hockey. Well, once uh, the games are done, I mean, and like I said, I think you could tell by – the handshakes tonight, Mike, as well as uh, the different players embracing it. Uh, a lot of respect there. and uh, Absolutely. I think it's a series that uh, this might be the best series uh, maybe the entire playoff. Well, you know, it's be I, tough to top. I was thinking uh, in between uh, overtime period, the, the, the end of the game and overtime, that, you know, we can't be disappointed if they lose because this could be the best we see. Uh, and, and, 
it was like uh, the finals. It was intense like that. And goes to seven games overtime. Fantastic. It certainly does. I appreciate uh, all your help on the broadcast here this year, Mike. Like I said, hopefully we'll get you back again. I know you're going to be in Winnipeg, I guess, next week. Uh, we get the Humboldt Broncos Friday, Saturday. Uh, your thoughts uh, heading into that series? I mean, the Humboldt Broncos are a very good hockey club. They, uh, they sure are. Have had to battle a little adversity off the ice yeah. for the last little while. We'll see how I guess that kind of affects them going in. But yeah. uh, all in all, I mean, that's a pretty well-oiled machine. They sure are. And uh, um, instead of Nolan, we get Rory, uh, <laughs> another good uh, guy and good SHL, SJHL insider. But that's going to be a, that's going to be another great series. Uh, you know, Coach Reagan mentioned it's going to give a few days for. Uh, the boys to heal up a little more. You can see there uh, what a difference, uh, you know, getting these guys back, uh, starting with Zach Kane and, and then Tremblay and Dupro. And, and we're, I know we'll see Kai Olison back in the lineup, who's a spark plug. Uh, he was concussed, so uh, I'm pretty sure we'll see him. I hope so. Um, so, uh, you know, it's going to be a good one. Again, I know it's going to be a good one. It certainly will, and of course that means the Melford Mustangs will now meet the Battleford Stars. That should be an interesting series yeah. there as well. Melford, a very good hockey club as well. I'll tell you what, I thought that uh, I actually picked LaRange to win that series. Yeah. And, you know, Melford uh, found a way to get her done and scored a lot of goals. So, uh, it, But here we go. you got the top four teams remaining now. Yeah, I guess that's the way it's going to In the standings, the top four teams are standing going into yeah. the semifinals. So. Mike Reagan hit it on the head, though, between one and eight. Pretty tight. Pretty tight league, and... Uh, the parody is, is fantastic, and it makes the regular season fun to watch. And, of course, these playoffs are uh, exceptional. It's, uh, it's great hockey, folks. Come out and watch wherever you're, uh, wherever you're at. And just the, you mentioned the parody. I mean, look at the battles right now. We didn't really know the final playoffs placings to literally the last week of the season. Yes, yeah. The Weyburn was, uh, well, it could have been, you're right, S, it could have been somebody else other than Esteban. Really. Nipwin, because Nipwin yeah. had some, there, it was Nipwin, Esteban kind of battling that's it out right, there. And that's then, right. Uh, you know, Weyburn was trying to hold on to that final playoff spot. Uh, Notre Dame did get a little bit of a push there at the end as well. And As you say, it seems like uh, a long time ago that, that and it really it wasn't. But, uh, but I, and I know it's long for you, and, and the, with that, with that uh, drive, it's not easy, but, uh, but, uh, it's over and a little closer, like Mike Reagan says, and uh, it's going to be great. It's going to be fun and uh, great to see the Bombers move on to the second round. I see Jaden Mercier down there talking to his mom and dad. As we move on to round number two, do we get to see him back in the Bomber lineup at some point? I don't know, boy. That was an awkward uh, tumble he took. In but the, the, the sense I was getting from Mike was that they thought that he might have. Uh, yeah. Like yeah. What's your thought? Do you think there's a possibility? Do you think it could happen? I think so. I mean, uh, anything's possible, right? Yeah, he, he he was in a sling there for a while. Uh, he's not, as we look at him down there. Uh, uh, he's. Uh, it would be great to see him back, wouldn't it? Uh, even even. It's so another thing to to think about, though, heading into the next yeah, round. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I another thing if you know if you get Mer Merce back and Egan, who do you stick? You know, these guys have played so good. Yeah, I know. Uh, and Egan hasn't played a game in a long time. No, and uh, uh, there, uh, you know, it's he, it's good. To, it's a good uh, problem, but it, it, you know, it's going to be an issue. You know, there's there's guys that have played really well that if these guys do come back, they're uh, they're not going to get a they're not going to get on the ice. Uh, you know, let's Aiden Chow gave it his all uh, uh, in this series. Uh, He's a true defenseman, but he was forced to play forward, and you know what? He got better as the series wore on. He's a defenseman. <laughs> He's not a forward, but uh, but uh, kudos to Eden Chow for uh, for filling in there. Absolutely. I think that's pretty much going to do it for our broadcast. Nolan Cole, I think, does want to pop on here. I think well, that we, uh, we might get to him quickly before we wrap things up. We can wait for uh, our friend Nolan. I I think he's almost here. Uh, Coach Detarnik just left, and uh, hey, with the interview with Nolan, here he comes. Right on, Nolan Cole. We'll come over, and we will talk to him quickly before we uh, do side things off here tonight. Oh. Big extended uh, post-game stuff for you, Ma. I guess uh, your take on the overtime winner there, Nolan. Well, I'm, Rob, it's out of our line of sight here uh, at the Whitney Forum, and you probably have a better look at it from here as I look down over your perch. But, uh, yeah, I was watching the goalie, Rob. I was watching him come out. 
He made the decision to come out, a good one, because Runke and Davis were bearing down on him. Sure. I was looking at him. He made a good play. Laser Hume to play it to the near wing. And I just got my head around in time to watch it go in the net. Uh, past it Kat actually Hurt, hit the. It was interesting because uh, Dupro's right here on the side of center. Yeah. He banked it right off. Like I'd say, well, you see where that little uh, that little uh, computer's down there. Yeah. I think right. it hit. I think it hit that partition and yeah. bounced in. And obviously, with a lot of a lot of mustard on that shot to go in that quickly. Anyways, uh, kind of. I, I use the word sickening to see that the the game end in that fashion, sure, yeah. right? And I know uh, I mentioned it to Mike Reagan off air here after we talked to you and even to Jason Tatarnik and. I mean, no disrespect to the Bombers. They played an outstanding series. I know. It's a tough way to lose, and, I get it. But they got it done here on home ice, and the bounces are part of this mystique up here in Flint Flot at the Whitney Forum. And you hate to see a playoff series end in that fashion, um, but that that's the way it goes. I mean, I, I, I talked. I mentioned that my dad always talked about hockey gods growing up, Rob, and I mentioned that to Mike in one of our interviews. And, and just when you look at the way the finals went last year, and you just thought Flint Flot might, might get a break at some point. And they were still full credit for the win here tonight they outshot the Bruins I thought Essendon played really well tonight uh, you know what this even... is one of the best performances yeah. I've seen from them again yeah how about that save that uh, Laser who makes on Forrest on the breakaway with about six minutes left unbelievable I met, uh, during that save I said I, I I mentioned on air like remember that save just remember that save because that could come back to bite the Bruins and it did it ends up being a power play goal for Cole Dupro um in a way, it kind of overshadows the game in a bit, Rob, because it was such an excellent, excellently played hockey game into overtime. And it's just, it's crazy to see it end. And, and Jason Detarnik said in our interview, he would have felt the same way if the Bruins had scored in that fashion, right? So yeah, yeah. that's the way the game goes. And it doesn't take away from what we've experienced over the last two weeks, Rob. Outstanding hockey between these two rivals, the likes of which the SJHL hasn't seen in years, really, right? Well, I said this to Mike Slip. This might be the best series of the playoffs. Yeah. It might be tough to top this. I mean, you're down to the final four with four really good hockey teams. I know. But it could be tough to, to top what we saw here in this series. Listen, Rob, and I, I, the guys are getting on the bus. i got to get going here. I appreciate you having me on post game, but what an outstanding series, an outstanding Game 7, and I just want to wish the Bombers the best of luck. Uh, heading into the second round. Uh, I know I've gotten to know you and a lot of people here in Flin Flon. I love coming up to this rink and, and the Whitney Forum. It's been a, I've made a lot of friends up here, I think, and uh, just an outstanding series. So just want to wish you guys the best of luck as you move on here. And I can say I'll be, I'll be hoping for you here over the next couple rounds. I hope you guys can go on and win the championship. I really do. Quickly, before I let you go, we've had everything in this series. As much as this one stinks the way it ended, should we be surprised at a goal like that? We've had everything else. I, yeah, good point. We've I mean, seen everything else in this series between these two rivals, and uh, boy, you're, that's a good point. I mean, uh, what what more could we have seen? And we saw it. And you know what? The way those two goaltenders are playing, it's almost like it took something like yes. that, right? Or I thought maybe it'd be a really perfect shot, as we saw in regulation, or a, a tip on a deflection, or a, maybe a, a bounce, and we saw a crazy bounce that people are going to be talking about, Rob. For a long time, but the Bombers got it done here tonight, and they win the series in seven games. So, congrats to them, Nolan. Great to see you. I've uh, enjoyed the friendship that yeah. we've developed the last couple of years. You're a fantastic guy, very, very good broadcaster. Gonna go, might be in the NHL one day. See you, Rob.